<coughs> uh, yeah, so we're on. Are we on? Cool. We are on. Winning. Oh, hang on, I need to remember to flick the fucking <coughs> camera, don't I? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Like, so, yeah, do you know what's happened since I've flicked to this format? This is one on one, yeah. where you've got the cameras straight on each other. Uh-huh. Is that on YouTube, the engagement on each episode has gone, not the engagement, wrong word. So, on your YouTube um, stats, yeah. your analysis, one of the things that gives back is the average duration that people yeah, watch each yeah, episode yeah, yeah. for, it's gone through the roof. Oh, uh, for, for 101 and 102. Okay. It gets to be mega, but yeah. it's also, I think, because with a camera like this, it's on me, yeah. you can, when I had it before, me we were side on to right. each other, you can't see the emotions in someone's face, you yeah, can't yeah, see yeah. what their, their, their little mannerisms and that, no, they can, people are like, they just, it's more engaging. Of course it's more engaging. Yeah. Uh, Gaz, what's happening? <laughs> I think we're just going to do what we do on the WhatsApp group, but uh, in person, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's, um, like I said to you before, uh, Patreon supporters, my Patreon supporters got the option to chuck you some questions. Yes. Uh, so let's do those now. Thanks for sending me those so I knew what to say. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, right. In fact, fucking camera. Right, let's do it now. Okay. Uh any questions for the next guest? Any questions for Sinita's Guild Gaz when he's on HR? Uh, and the questions are thus. Mark Walker, this is from. Okay. Mark Walker. Yeah. I've got a few questions. I'm reading this verbatim. That's so right. Good, um, it? I'm, I'm assuming it's the is way he's he in it. He's also kicking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a few questions. Does he have any plans to do some sports kit, technical t-shirt, short or long sleeve? Secondly, Gaz comes across as a deep thinker, stroke, philosopher. Jesus. And I'd be interested to know if he was like that before the military or if his military experiences contributed to that. So, sports kit. Sports kit. Are you a philosopher? Okay, sports kit. Um, not or, yet. Oh, or were you a philosopher? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Do the so sports kit first. Sports kit. Um, not yet. Uh, I mean, I was ta- I've, I've, I've been ta- thinking about this recently because we get asked that sort of thing quite a lot. And the issue I have is that I'm a, a kid pest. You know what I mean? I've, 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 I, I won't do something until I can do it well. And yes, I could just buy some, you know, there's brands that do this. There's well-known brands that do this. we we'll just buy something off the shelf, stick my logo on it and sell it. Could do that. Don't really want to do that. That's not how I... I I can spot that and I wouldn't buy it. So until I can do those things properly, which we ain't there yet, I won't do it. Um, yeah, it's the same with like, I ask, get asked for like Gore-Tex jackets and shit like that. And uh, I, I'm not through doc. You know, I haven't got that budget behind me and that in, the investment behind me to be able to do that. So no, not yet. Give me a chance. We'll get there eventually. Philosopher thing. So the other one was, uh, Gaz comes across as a deep thinker stroke philosopher. I'd be interested to know, I being Mark Walker, if he was like that before the military or if his military experiences contributed to that. Okay. Um, deep thinker, yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know where people, I don't know how many of your listeners don't follow my stuff as well. So I, I may be repeating myself slightly for the people who follow me too. But um, So I did five years in two power. Very sort of normal average guy. I then left for six years. In those six years, I basically went on a, a journey of self-discovery. <laughs> uh, I had a year where I just did an awful lot of reading. Um, yeah, philosophy, religion, all that stuff. Uh, did a healthy amount of psychedelics. Um, and then I went to uni and I studied uh, theology and uh, religion at I uni. I forgot you did that. Yeah, so did that at uni. Um, I only did that, I, I can't say that I learned anything there. My sort of, I knew what I thought prior to going. I basically spent three years arguing with uh, Irish Catholic girls about uh, Christianity. Um, did that, and then I got out of that there, I, then I went to West Fish Um I, I wouldn't say that the military really sort of informed anything about it. I I think my worldview going in the second time, having done some sort of research and thinking and a lot of like I don't know, it was it was a it was an odd year. I did some mad stuff. Um it made me a better soldier when I went back in because I was a I was a more rounded person, I think anyway. Yeah. Mm. 
Interesting. I, I, I mean, I wasn't like that before. I, I'm not, I'm not that, I don't think I'm, I mean, define a deep thinker, right? Yeah. I, uh, I suppose anyone who goes below the first level of thought these days could be classed a deep thinker. I think most people, I, I think we're much, there's much fewer deep think, much fewer deep thinkers going on, there's much fewer, much less people paying attention to that depth of mm -hmm. emotion and feeling. It just, and that's because of these, you know, these yeah, of course. fucking phones and information and yeah. all that. But, I mean, I've, yeah, uh, interesting. But yeah, it, I, it did help me in the military side of things. I think just in, just in the way that, well, the the off the 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 um, side effect, the side impact, side effect, or the, the result of basically, you know, um, finding things difficult at times, mm -hmm. and then down the line, sort of, when I'm in a better place, mm -hmm. re looking at that and understanding, you know, like you got to pay attention to what you're, you're thinking, you're yeah. feeling, and not just on the emotional side of things, but why you believe in certain things, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that may be, fucking conspiracy theories, flipping, you know, yeah. um, whether you think we should Brexit, for example, or, yeah. wh or whether you think that um, uh, gay marriage should be allowed. I don't yeah. know. I'm just throwing those things out there. Anyway. You should be you should be fighting to be wrong all the time. You should be looking to try and be wrong all the time. <clears throat> Yeah. You know, being right is not really what you want. You, if you think you're right, you probably need to keep looking at it and just, you know, yeah, you don't yeah. want to be one of those people. No, you need, you need, yeah, you're absolutely right, mate. You need to look to disprove yourself. And I, I've had, um, I was actually talking this morning on the phone with someone who is uh, a conspiracy theorist. I should, yeah, I'll use that phrase. Um, mm -hmm. But I was talking about another friend of mine who is extreme, everything's conspiracy, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, ex and we were on that point. It's like, you need to, Try and disprove yourself mm -hmm. all the time, and and the, the example I, I gave, I was, I was talking. To, we were talking about this uh, the other mate of mine. We were talking about the Pentagon, mm -hmm. the plane hitting the Pentagon, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's it was around. We were talking around. Um, basically, he thinks that no plane hit the Pentagon. It's a conspiracy. It was a missile that hit the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. um, why is there no camera footage? Mm -hmm. uh, which there isn't. This was one. There isn't. I mean, a searchlight load. There's, there's, yeah. like a, there's a five frame clip from a dodgy security, security camera, right? Yeah. Um, of a blur of something hitting the Pentagon. Now, without going into the depth of this, right? He said that's a plane, right? You can't tell it's a plane. Okay? No. You no, he said it's a missile. You can't tell it's a missile. You can't tell it's a plane. You cannot tell. Right? Mm -hmm. But what you can tell is it's a massive blurry object. Yes. Right? And the point I made was, okay, is that more like a plane or a missile? Because mm -hmm. if it's a missile, a five-frame clip, you ain't going to see it. It's probably six foot long, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a bit longer. That, and the speed they go, you ain't going to see it. Mm -hmm. But I said, is that massive blur coming in at the trajectory of a plane landing? Mm -hmm. Is that more likely to be a plane or a missile? Couldn't answer the question. Wouldn't answer the question, right? I'm not saying, is that a plane? It's not the question I'm asking. Yeah. But his response was, send that clip to 10 people and ask them if that's a plane. And they all say no. I'll say, yeah, they probably will say no. But if I send that to 10 people and say, is that more like a plane or a missile? Mm -hmm. They're going to say it's more like a plane. But the point being, it's not about whether it's a plane or not. It's about whether it's a missile. It ain't a fucking missile. Anyway, but it, there's no willingness to disprove yourself. Uh -huh. You know, if you yeah. want to believe in, if you want to believe in, um, if you want to believe that, uh, oh, you know, fucking example. If you want to believe that it's a missile that hit the Pentagon, then you're going to go and search for, um, why, why, why we know a missile hit the Pentagon. That's not what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. You're only looking for why we know it was a plane that hit the Pentagon. That's what I'm looking for. The opposite to what you think. Yeah. And if you can't find any evidence to support that, then you're right. <laughs> right. Anyway, Jesus Christ. The high <laughs> uh, right. Next question, mate. Next question. Yes. Uh, from Chris Michaels, uh, Dark Side Insta. Okay. Uh, yeah. Insta podcast. If he could change any aspect of his of his routine to become more productive, what would it be? Hmm. Interesting. Um. I always, I, I've always want to get up early. Like I've, I fight that all the time. I want to, I've, I want to, like my natural thing is to be up late. I'm a, a later in the day person, but I feel like I waste that time when I am up late. So I, I always try and be pushing myself to get up early. Like not, I, I used to do a thing called a, like, uh, like Jocko does. I used to do that thing where you get up at half four. And I did like a thing on Instagram where I used to go live on Instagram at half four every morning. 
Um, and the idea was I was trying to get people to sort of get up a bit early and get your productive stuff before they before you get the stress of the day, get all your crap done prior to that, whether that's fizz, whether that's whatever. Get your crap. Because I, I like the logic of it. It makes sense to me, and I, I want to do that. So I did that for a while. Um, and I, I tried to encourage people by giving a discount code every day. So if you got up, you got like a like a twenty five cent discount code for the store. So I was trying to do it. But what I realised was the only people who were up were Americans who were up anyway, and people were on night shifts. So I was wasting my time. But yeah, that's probably what it would be. It would be I do gradually do it every now and then, and then I slip back into getting normal time. But I mean, we're all procrastinators. You know, it, it's it it happens. It's a, I think it's a quite a human thing. I don't think it should be too routine anyway. You don't be too routine, do you? Because then you can't, then if your routine gets thrown out, that's a negative impact as well. You know what I mean? I'd, 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 yeah, I've, I aspire to get up earlier. That's yeah. probably where it would be. Right, got you. Yeah, yeah, you're right with the routine. My my, uh, my youngest mate is mad on routine, but it's, uh, which is good. I like it because mm. it's, it's measured, it's, it's, you know, it's, there's order, there's yeah. order in life, but... The challenge is also trying to prepare her for, look, if your routine changes, it's not the drama. Yep. Don't come in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, I see that with my missus. I'm sure my missus is autistic, isn't she? Oh, I so, don't know. Yeah, yeah. My missus is autistic. You wouldn't know, but she is. Um, and, like, she, she's getting better. She's working on it. But if, 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 not really routine, but, like, if she, she doesn't like short notice things. So if we plan to do something one day and I'm like, right, we're not doing that now. I'm going to go and do this blow your mind for the day. It'll take a, a long time to come back from that. Uh, but yeah, that's, I, I sort of work with it all the time. Yeah. Cool. Right. This one is from Dave Davis. Yep. Oh, yeah, the beard's gone. I was going to say the beard, but the beard's gone now, right? He's got rid of the beard. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got rid of the beard. Yeah. Dave Davis. Um, so his question is, with a brand that is so bound to ethos and behaviour, have you had to deal with people who wear the brand but act like dicks? If not, do you have a contingency plan if it happens? Um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Now, I, he's absolutely right. It's I, the brand is completely bound to ethos. It's it's uh, it's difficult. Now, I try and focus on that, just being uh, looking after myself with that. You know what I mean? It keeps me in check. Going, well, you can't be a dick. There's loads of stuff I could do to make more money and all that stuff, but I don't because it's you'd be being a dick then. Um, yeah, I I know of loads of people who I see wearing the brand. I'm like, oh, I wish you wouldn't fucking buy it. But there's nothing you can do. Yeah, you you can't control it like that. I've had a Walt. I had a proper Walt in the first year. I had a I used to make the Power Edge Hangman shirts. We had a, a Jen Walt who was on Walt Me Hunters Club. Is wearing my gear. Had that. Yeah. But there's nothing you can do. What can I do? No. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, exactly. It's a free country. Yeah, exactly. Just refund them. You know, take your money back. If I if I genuinely saw someone who was an absolute scumbag doing sketchy stuff, I would just, I'd refund them everything they'd ever um given me and just disown them. What can I, what can I do? They don't owe me anything then and I can just, you know, step away from it. I wonder if there's dicks now currently planning on buying loads of stuff and then acting like a complete bell end. Or the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Get their money back with free stuff. Mate, it, it is difficult. I, there's, I, there's a few big ones I'm like, who spent a lot of money with the company and I'm just like, I really despise you. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Last question from Graham Groves. Um, Thoughts on... Oh, so this is a question for both of us. Oh. Uh, that's, that's nice of me to be it thought is. of. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on the current veteran resettlement formula of leads of forces, become an Instagram motivator, maybe a book, maybe a podcast. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Graham? Uh, maybe a podcast, get some Z-list Instagram influencer mates, then attend the opening of a front door. Um, we know the fitness DVD is coming at Christmas. <laughs> we all know blokes doing this, so you can't... So you can't get away with saying they're entitled to make a living so we're not allowed to say we all, you're saying we all know people like this so we're not allowed to say oh they're entitled to make a living yeah so we, we have to address the question properly right <laughs> shall I repeat it what are our thoughts on the current veteran resettlement formula via the forces get on Instagram get be, become a motivator influencer uh, attend an opening and then bring out a DVD well <laughs> Is this Grosie? 
It's gross. It's it's gross. A, he's a bitter he man. Is, he's a bitter man. I haven't seen that bloke face. Do you know, he was like, when I went back into the army, uh, he was running Browning, I think, by an platoon, and he was like, I was obviously Sibby going in. Uh, yeah, he was, uh, I think he was the platoon sergeant running that place. So, I was, I was in depot with him, wasn't I? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Creature. Uh, typical, <laughs> typical from that bloke. Um, well, they are. They're entitled to make a living. Like, you, you're entitled to do that. You know, I, I, you can't be hypocrite about it. Like, this is a way of doing things. So, if you're talking about the influences and all that, then if you've got something to offer, then what's the problem? If you genuinely have got something to offer, then what's the what's the issue? The important thing is the integrity of it. So if you're going to try and sell yourself as something or sell your experiences, sell the experiences that you've had and sell what you actually were. You know, Ben, on our, my podcast, Ben did a big rant about this the other day with people setting up brands and stuff and trying to sell something that they weren't. You know what I mean? Because like, all oh, the operator fucking bullshit. All that. There's how many brands are there that are just set up like that by, you know, no, no disrespect by someone who has never been lived that life, who's never done that. You know, Ben has done that, so he's entitled if he wanted to to use that Webster's term. But you know, yeah, as long as they're being there's a level of integrity there. When who who really cares? You know, I think he's, it's he's a bit of mate. He's a bit. He's a well, because he's fat. <laughs> Is he fat? Might as well be. <laughs> I haven't seen him for years. He's probably dead fit. <laughs> he's definitely ugly. Hey, he's a Patreon supporter, don't he's gonna cut this he's gonna cut this oh, Patreon support yeah. off. That's how you got the question in. Oh fair one. Yeah. Well it's nice for him to, you know, look after you. Pities you, doesn't he? <laughs> Pity from Grey and Groves. That's, that's, that's Jesus. That's I'm at an all time low. Yeah. Anyway, that's the Patreon question. It is interesting though on, on that subject that you brought up there, because I was talking I was talking about this to a Oh, yeah, a mutual friend mm -hmm. called Nick. Okay. So then begins with M. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was when, oh, your man, flipping Obi-Wan Nairobi. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I got on, got, on, got on social media. Yeah. Mate, and man, overnight, his following went through the roof. Amazing. Yeah. But the conversation we were having was around, uh, and Nick asked, is, is, it, is this going to be like, is this going to be the norm? What is the impact of this? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, on that subject, the influence side of things, mm -hmm. when were you leaving before? When this didn't exist, when podcasts didn't exist, when Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of it didn't exist, right? And, and never mind leaving the military, when someone is looking for something to do in life, mm -hmm. to earn money, right, yeah. for whatever reason, this opportunity wasn't there. Mm -hmm. it, it represents now, I mean, it represents now a very easy channel to try and uh, to try and to, to to explore, which doesn't cost you anything mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. Doesn't cost you anything. You post on Instagram, no, no. for example, yeah. um, to try and make some money that way for whatever endeavour you're doing. Yeah. Personal, fit, uh, you know, a fitness trainer or a, you know, a senior's guild. Um, it's an it's an easy avenue to try, especially for mm -hmm. the military getting out. It's it's almost like it's it's almost like the CP was when CP was that at the height. Yeah. It was the default get out do CP because it was. You could get there and you could earn money. And now the default option has got to be get out, right, it's gone, let's let's shout about my military career, mm -hmm. let's use that to my advantage, mm -hmm. let's do some motivational stuff, just because it's an easy option. And a lot of their peer group are doing it. Yep. We, you are doing it, I'm doing it, obviously, in, in, you know, in, in, our, in our own ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, almost like a proven method, if you know what I mean. Yeah exploiting social media for your use and exploiting your military background yeah within reason well it's it's about whether you've actually got something to offer isn't it and the, the problem with using your military background is unless you are so you get caught in a trap of if you don't have something very specific to offer as, it, as you personally because like there's so many people doing this now you can't you get caught in the trap of paying top trumps with your career so who is more relevant who who's done more things that are useful so if you're going to play that game, then you look at Christian Craighead, who's just come out, the guy you're talking about, fucking everyone like Obi. Um, all of the, you know, the, well, obviously they're like Z-list really, but all the uh, SF lot who are currently on TV, you know, they're Z-list celebrities in the big game of things, aren't they? They're not A-list, but they will be seen as like the big players who are maybe making money properly off this stuff. Um, who there has got more experience than, uh, if you know about what Christian Craig gets done, 
that Nairobi thing is part of it. It ain't all of it. The only one there who's done anything close to that is Billy. The rest of them, you know, Foxy, and then the other two, certainly fucking Al Middleton, the fuck has he done compared to this guy? You know what I mean? They've got... If you're going to play that top drums game, there's always somebody else who will come out who is more current, more relevant, and has done more than you. You know that? We've all done stuff. Yeah. That you're going to start playing that game. So unless you have something very specific to offer, yeah, you might have no military experience at all, really, but as an individual, be able to offer something. Like, personally, I... I, I I was sitting at certainly. It took me about six months to work out that, yes, there's a military element to this, but I never play off my career. When have you actually heard me talk about anything that I've done? Don't do it. Fuck all. I ain't done the thing compared to other people. If I look at the people I've, my peer group, the people I've worked with, you know, away, Christian Craig, perfect example, fucking chocolate, Josh Leakey, you know, Josh Leakey was in my team at one point. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting against VC winners. I'm just a very average guy, you know. Um, you're better off trying to find something that you as a person have got to offer. And that everyone has a right to try this. Like, I absolutely I talk about this with Ben and Luke on my podcast all the time. Give it a go. Because this is being self-employed, if you can pull it off, is mega. You know, I, I love it. I did this by accident, but I love it. It's really good. The sense of freedom, like today... I ain't working today. I'm here to chat with my mate. You know what I mean? Give it a go. But you've got to realise that it, it ain't easy. And there are so many now that of everything, you know, certainly like coffee companies, T-shirt companies, you have got to find a niche. And if you haven't got that niche, and that, a niche isn't a new shape of skull with a dagger in it, or a fucking, you know, a different, a fucking C8 with a different sight on it. That's, that's your logo. You know, it, you're going to sink it's not going to work out for you. So you need to be, if you're going to get down the road, you need to think very, very carefully about it. And fed up of books. Stop writing books unless you've actually got something decent. We've all heard the same stories. You know what I mean? I think anyway. How many more books do we need with a bloke with a uh, grizzled face on the front staring back at you talking about motivation and stuff? You know what I mean? It's There's people who do it much better, I think. Yeah, I I mean those what you're talking about there in terms in, in that oh, in the so, mark. Go on. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. You interrupt me, mate. You carry on. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, I, on that point, I, I there's a mate of mine who who writes his own books, and well, if I don't point this out, we'll get real snappy with me. Um, the majority of those people that you see ain't coming anywhere near writing those books. They've had little bits. You know what I mean? If you're gonna do that, write your own books. Fully write your own books. Yeah, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, right. Yeah. So the 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 the, ch- the market saturated. The, the, when I say the market, no, the market's not saturated. Well, it is saturated, yeah. right? Um, but and uh, like you said, also the the so- social media is saturated with the marketing of those products. Mm-hmm. Flipping epic, mate. And I've had a couple of ideas. Like my brain works a million miles an hour, as I'm sure yours does, and I get mm-hmm. ideas all the time. And I have put a lot of hours. Uh, days even into planning business stuff over the last year or so and then three or four months down the line think what am i doing mm-hmm. why have i I'm just wait this is just another x or this is just another y mm-hmm. it's easy to create the product oh that's cool or this is mega yeah. or oh, people who love that that's easy and they will but good luck getting that in front of everybody else's product yeah. especially the established brands yeah We've got a big following, like the Cineas Guild, like the Contact Coffee, like the HR4K, like flipping you, you name it. All those, mm-hmm. all those big brands out there. You know, it's it's just, it's super challenging. And and for and but those lessons, they are. It's easy for us to say them because we've learned them. Mm-hmm. I think for most people, they have to experience how hard it is Perfect. before they go. Let's not do that again. Yeah. But on the on the on the books, mate. I don't know. It. I understand what you're saying. About, uh, you know, motivational books and the war stories, pretty much everything, you know, nothing's new out there. Let's see what Christian's book is now. That'll be a good one. Um, Will be. Uh, but it depends on the reason you're doing the book. Yeah. You know, I thought about it in the past, uh, I thought about it in the past and it, and it wouldn't be for other people. It mm-hmm. wouldn't be like an, yeah, like an ego thing mm-hmm. uh, because I'm like you, mate. Uh, 99.9% I've done 
of stuff I've done, it, everyone was done. Yeah. You know, everyone's experienced similar things. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be an ego thing, but the reason I thought about it in the past is like a get off my chest kind of a get off my chest kind of thing. And I and I and I, I like reading war stories, and it would be a mix of. I've always thought it would be a mix of fact and fiction. So, well, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't be like a, oh, look at the crazy shit I did. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It wouldn't be like that. It'd be a, it'd be a mix. Get the, get the funny little real anecdotal stories in that I've mm -hmm. experienced all my time. Yeah. Get those in there and then put a bit of fiction in there. And it's, you know, it's for entertainment fact. I had to just, yeah, just kind of release kind of thing. Well, there's a difference between, let me, let me be clear then. There's a difference, I would say, between someone who genuinely wants to write a book has a book in them, really wants to get, has something to say, and really wants to get a book out. And someone who is on the treadmill of, okay, well, I've done that, I've ticked this box, now I need to get a book out. Tick this box, I've got this. You know what I mean? If, you, if, you're, if you're looking at you yourself as a brand, if you're an individual, you're looking at yourself as a brand, are you writing a book because you really genuinely have something new and interesting to say specific to you? Or are you just doing it because your publicist maybe says, you should probably get a book out. We can make some money off the book. We'll get to someone says a ghostwriter. You just fucking, you know, you sit and give them some stories and they'll put it together for you. And maybe we can get two or three out. You know what I mean? There's a difference between that and somebody who genuinely has a book in them, I would say. But, but, right, you, I, I see the perspective you're coming at it from. Yeah. Right. There's another perspective. I had a conversation a couple of years back, and um, it was—I uh, don't know if you know him—but he he he, um, he works in a very prestigious unit in the British Army, mm -hmm. right? And I was I was checking. I wanted to check someone's background uh, who was potentially coming on the podcast. Yep. They never did, right? Because of the, the bit of conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but in that conversation, the the guy I was speaking to said to me. One of the first things out of his mouth was, uh, I can't stand it. I fucking hate it. I hate those people who who sell their souls, souls to the devil. And he was referring to books, mm -hmm. right? And this guy is still in. Yeah. And I, what I said to him was, oh, no, I didn't say it to him. What I was thinking, and I thought about it after the conversation around his yeah. books, I thought, when you leave, right, whichever unit you're part of, mm -hmm. when you leave, if you get, it's an, it's an unknown Getting work, getting money, yeah. right? A big unknown, especially if I mean, even down at Hereford, right? Yeah, yeah. Most of those guys getting out. What what makes them? What puts them above everyone else? Yeah, yeah. Very rare for that yeah, to happen. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very hard for them too. And I don't think people appreciate that. Mm -hmm. The way people appreciate that, um, but they're much more likely to get things like a book deal and stuff like that. And it, it represents to them a a a stepping stone to well immediate financial uh, immediate financial kickback in a, a really uncertain time mm -hmm. which they don't have to put much. i mean imagine you getting when you were about to get out and you didn't know much and someone said to you we'll look we can do a book based on your stories mm -hmm. you don't have to write it mm -hmm. and you'll get x amount of money for that mm -hmm. yeah i know what i'd be like like if i can do it in my naivety mm -hmm. Maybe even later on, I'd say yes. But even at the time, without I would without knowing everything, I'd probably still say yes. Yeah, mega. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that that's the other angle to it. It they aren't as initially they aren't as savvy with it, and there's benefits. There's benefits to it, mate. Especially mm -hmm. like I said, if you are your average, you're your average Joe from whatever unit you're a part of. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and you haven't got an immediate job opportunity. You know, popping up that's going to chuck you loads of money, or, or it's just going to be a mega job, and wherever you want to be. When's, I get your, it. when's your book coming out? <laughs> no chance, mate. Like, I get it. I understand that. I get that completely. But one, the chance of you actually making any, any decent money off it, pretty fucking slim. You know, these people, anyone who has had one of these books out knows you ain't getting that much money. It's going to take uh, quite a lot. It'd be something very special for you to make a decent amount of money off it. You might, you get like a, a lump and that's pretty much you. Um, so it's, it doesn't make any sense. You're then also then putting yourself potentially on that treadmill of like wanting to put yourself in that ballpark and then fail. I just don't think for the average person, I under, I totally understand it, but I just think, you, I think you should, I don't know, maybe it's just me being a dick because it's, it's me. I would never do it because I, that's a world that I, I don't want to, get into like it, it's hard enough for me like this so for ages i didn't show myself with the brand at all you know what i mean i've mainly because for the first year and a half i was still at work and i couldn't show my face or whatever because of you know the disclosure shit um 
but I I realised that people sort of wanted to see me a little bit and see the person behind the brand a little bit, and I I still don't like it, but people like to see it because they know that a lot of it the brand is sort of my worldview, if you know what I mean. But that's hard enough, you know, to be you know to tr be, be desperately looking for like we know people who are like this desperately looking for that next opportunity to get in the paper that next opportunity to have an interview oh i've got a radio interview oh, i've got a tv interview oh i've got this publicity you it's a treadmill that has a it's, it's a finite it, it is a cliff at the end of it you know you are useful for a while and then that's you gone because somebody more relevant comes the zeitgeist changes and you're no longer the person people want to speak to and then what do you do? Because it's like being, it's kind of like being a salesman, but you're selling yourself. A salesman's always looking for the next level. You hit that level, like I come from a family of salesmen. You hit that level that you've been working on for a year. Yes, I've done it. They give you a new level. But the difference with this is you get to a point where there isn't another level and there's a pit. And then what do you do? You know, you're this guy who's been on TV doing interviews and you're a, you know, a Zedless celebrity. And now... You're working at security in a fucking Morrison's. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, not interested. And I, unless you are, you have some very, very, very specific to sell experiences, have something about you, I would just, just don't do it. But that's, that's my opinion. Yeah, the only caveat I'd make to that is depends on what you, depends on what your intent is. Mm -hmm. So if, if your intent is to be a, for example, TV yeah. presenter. Yep. If your intent is to be a commentator on whatever issue, whatever, yep. and, and that's your long-term goal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a personality. I'm going to be a. I'm going to be a Farage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be. Um, I don't know. Give me an example of a, of a. Of, you know, you get the, the. You do get ex-military. You are regularly on stuff commentary. Yep. Not on, rarely on mainstream. But you, you see my point. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Lineker, a flipping Lineker on football. You know, that's that's his long-term. That's what he does. He's on TV. He comments that commentators mm -hmm. and that shit. Um, and in which case is your personality a sell? Is your personality a sells you? Yeah. Not just to the people you want to employ you, contract you, but also to the people who who are going to consume you, as in they're going to mm -hmm. watch you, listen to you. Um, and you have to put yourself out there then. And again, if you're ex-military and you've got and this and that interests people, you know, your military background, it may be the same as everyone else mm -hmm. who are ex-military, but it's still you can still offer insights to Civpop that are very interesting to them because it's not common stuff to them. Mm -hmm. it's, diff it's a difficult one. I understand what you're saying. It depends on the intent. Depend depends on the intent and the motivation behind it and the way you go about it, I suppose. I agree with that, but I'd like a, I'd sort of reiterate, like, I agree with exactly what you're saying there. Like, you can want to do that. But, you know, you don't get, perfect example, you don't get Andy McNabb coming on talking about stuff anymore because he's, 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 he's this generation don't know who he is. Yes, he's got books. You know what I mean? When we were probably teenagers in our 20s, he's the blacked out face guy you got talking about stuff. They ain't going to him anymore because he's not relevant in this generation. You know, you have a, if you're going to do that and then only talk about military things, it's, I, you're probably better off having a situation where you have something completely aside from the military that you are good at and that you can talk about. You know, something you that is... Uh, you're not talking to a, a very specific group of people, even though you're talking to civilians, but did, plenty of civilians couldn't give a fuck about the military. So you better to do that and then have an extra layer of your military background. I always I always think that you, when you meet somebody, I don't know, I, th I think, you should, I, I don't tell people, see, people know because of what I do, but if I meet somebody, I never tell people what I did for a living. Never tell them, you know. Um, I always like them to, oh, Gaz is a dick or Gaz is a nice guy, whatever they think about me. And then they find out that I did stuff. You know what I mean? I just think you shouldn't, especially if you've left, it shouldn't be all you are because you've left. And if you're going to continue to try and sell that, there's a, there's a, a timeline where that ends and you then have to be in exactly the same situation you were five years ago when you were still in. If you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's just it's not for uh, me, mate. It's what? It's just not for me. It's not t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need to talk to you after this. 
actually. <sighs> yeah. But another idea of it. <sighs> if I didn't have the idea, it wasn't my idea. It was, in uh, the bath. It, <laughs> when you normally have ideas and send me messages. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was something I wanted to talk to you about. Mm-hmm. What the hell was it? What the hell was it specifically? And I can't remember now. I'm not sure. Oh, mate. No, I can't remember. No? Oh, no, that was it. That was it. We were talking about it for the podcast. Um, the entitlement. Yes. The, in fact, let's okay. stay from the entitlement side of things, right? Okay. There was a... I was, it's the... How do we move... Right. There is value in... Yes. The... But just don't cut me off before I finish I was, the sentence. Okay. There is value in um, the the portrayal of veterans as victims, right? There's some value there somewhere, and that lies, I think, only in the fact that it generates more money for military charities in painting the picture that all veterans, most veterans are victims, most veterans are suffering from flipping mental health issues, most veterans need, or ex-military, because mm-hmm. you don't like to term veterans, dear, or most ex-military um, need... Oh, right, someone, yeah. then someone else does. Mm-hmm. Uh, most ex-military um, need a hand to succeed in life, mm-hmm. right? Um, I would... It's got some use, but it's not good. As in generally, it needs to be fucked off. Because most of us, most of us are extremely capable. Agreed. Yeah. So how do we... How, when that kind of situation is going on, yeah. and that picture has been painted... In whatever area, however it's being done, whatever platform, by whatever personality uh-huh. is being done, how do you combat it? How do you move away from that? How do you reduce the impact of its impact? See, how would it, uh, reduce the impact of its impact? How do you reduce the impact? Oh, I don't know what you mean. Um, see, I, what you just said there, so I, you said there is value in portraying us as, as victims. Uh, I, that wasn't the fu- that wasn't the full sentence though. I said it is very small and it's yeah, and, it, the, and it's only there in generating money from military charities agreed. in some yeah, ways. Understood. Right. However, um, I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze on that. Like I agree. Yeah, it's like if I want money, I'll go rob a bank. You know, I can get it's, it's a way of me getting some some cash and sorting my problem out. But I'm a bank robber then. You know, it's not worth it. It, it would affect the people, in the, you know, the, the repercussions of that are, are big. I don't think that the portrayal of us as victims, whether it generates more money for charities or not, is worth the squeeze. I agree, I, yeah, I, agree, I, yeah. I, I'm, that's, I don't, yeah, don't like that. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? It's real difficult because it's one of the hardest things for this community to talk about because, uh, there are people who really need help, really need help, um, but they are the minority, you know, they're the minor- minority, you know, and that's not saying that within those people, obviously, there's a scale of of uh, how bad the, the problems are, but they're in the bulk of it, they're still the minority, and I don't know, they, we, we are in a situation where I certainly feel like most people, I mean, I'm completely wrong about this maybe, but I certainly feel like the way we're portrayed um, makes people think that we do have, we are going to have problems. And I think the only way we can do it is by, the only way we can remedy that is by people who don't have problems or do have problems that have come out the other side of it. Yeah? Because, like, you're not on the scrap heap because you've had dramas, you know what I mean? And come out the, the other side of it. Yeah, maybe I've not had dramas, so I, when I talk about it, I feel like I'm talking like I'm being a dick. Um, like, maybe you never really get over it. I don't know. But stories of success because of your service and examples of people who have just done something, been a success in some way, whether that's business. Business is probably the best example for me to use because that's the game I'm in. Like, stories of people who have been have, have started businesses done well and just you know it's because of their service because of the things that we learned because of the mindset we have not like these these veteranpreneur awards right they destroy me 
heropreneur, like veteranpreneur, all that shit. Do you get do you get award ceremonies for milkmen who used to be a milkman but now they run a steel factory? Do you get that? Do you get any sort of other thing where you get an award because you used to do a, a specific, an old a different job? No, it doesn't but, happen, does no, it? But 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 okay, but that, you can't you can't really draw a comparison, right? I mean, the, these things came about as a result of those kind of awards came about, and all these things exist as a result of um, a concerted effort, especially around the oh four oh five oh six no oh five oh six yeah oh four um, time period yeah. of trying to get public support behind the military mm -hmm. behind and. and I mean, predominantly that was because because they needed that public support behind the campaigns. The government needed that support, the waning support to get yep. back behind the campaigns. The off, uh, I, can't, I said it earlier. Off, the, 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 the 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 indirect um, result of that is a, a a much bigger increase in the support behind for service serving personnel, ex serving personnel, and it's and that's why things like that came about. Heropreneurs, agreed, yeah. Um so, yeah, it's not like Milkman have a problem with PR. Well, no, but it, it, it's, I don't know, it, it, you're still, the the things you're talking about, like the, the, the side bonuses, I don't think are worth having this thing where it's all well done, you used to do this, and it was real nasty, and you got through it, and now here's, here's a little badge. Because you did well. Look, aren't you running a business? And you're, you look all the things you've been through, and you've run a bit. You're running a business well. It's patronising. It's patronising. It's like, how about I learn loads of stuff during my service? And yeah, fine, I had a really hard time, and it was crap. And maybe I did have some mental dramas as, as you know, because of it. Draw a line there. I'm now doing this, and I'm doing this because my. The positives I have from the military, the positive mindset I have because of the way that we do things, because we solve problems, you know, because we're used to like making order out of chaos and everything going wrong and having to just make something happen, because we're used to that, that's why I've done well, you know. Yeah, but those it's not, those awards aren't, this. it isn't about um, celebrating you come from Poverty, yeah, as in you know, yeah, 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 yeah. in the military to now, even even with that hindrance, even with that hindrance and all that that rubbish start at your your career, you've managed yeah. to you still managed to create a business. It's, that's not what it is. It's not about that. Why is it then? It, it's a celebration of achievement in the same way that in the same way that well, I was going to say in the same way is for like we're women celebrating women in business, but that isn't because because there there is you know there is a there, you know you've. Yeah, they have like women in business awards and stuff like yeah. that, don't they? Um, but that's about, but, but that is about coming from an op oppressed, if you like, background of it's uh -huh. hard for women to succeed in business as a as a bad comparison. It's not like that. That's not for the heropreneurs and stuff like that. I mean, let's we keep saying heropreneurs. Let's not focus on one. It's generally <laughs> yeah. There's loads. There's a, there seems to be a new one every week. There's this <laughs> constant. It's the same people going to get the awards. I don't. I don't find it patronising at all. I don't, really? I, no, I don't find it patronising. But that's because I've got a different perspective. Of yeah, yeah, you. totally. You see it as, oh, what, we can't succeed. I don't understand why it exists other than that, though. Or they, or if it, otherwise, you just pat yourself on the back, aren't you? If, it, if it's not, if it isn't an agenda to go, well done, look, we, look what happened, and now you're doing this. It's just a load of people who are running a business who used to be in the military pat each other on the back, which is equally pointless and ego-driven. You're a grumpy old man. What? I, so, I, it's in, do they not have the same intent as other, like, as a award ceremonies that are not military orientated? Like, I don't know, um, like te technical innovation awards mm. or, um, or, or, uh, big, best, best marketing, best marketing brand, best marketed brand UK 20 flipping 20, mm. and a company gets awarded that. What's the difference between that and entrepreneurs getting an award? I suppose it's, it, it's very so silly. Again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. If this is for you, like, I, I've seen, whenever I talk, I sound like a dick when I'm on toilet, I? I can't help it. Um, like, whenever I'm saying this stuff, I'm talking about my opinion. Like, if this, it's just not, this stuff is not for me because of the way I see the world. So, if this is for you, more power to you. Crack on. It's fine. 
and we're talking about my personal opinion about this. Um, yeah, it's just any sort of. <sighs> Would you accept an award? No. If you got a business award no. and they said you won this award and this and they said you this is why you guys no. you wouldn't accept it. Not interested. Because it's just just too, I it's I don't know, like I say, it's a worldview thing. It's too much ego stuff there. It's just going, well done, big guy. You know what I mean? It's it's done It doesn't need if you did it in, very in private, if you now give me a little badge that you've made and went, I really respect you, mate, you've done really well, you know, high five, well done. I'll be fine with that because it's somebody else that I respect going, it's like your mate going, well done. You know what I mean? That's different. It's behind closed doors. Everyone has a hug and high fives and goes, yeah, well done. And that's that. I think that's different. I don't like the public aspect of it. I don't like the fact of going on a stage and getting an award and all, all of that because then you then start, I don't know, I suppose then, you then start to chase that. So like you win one year, and then what do you do next year? You know what I mean? And I, and the people that I see winning this stuff, I don't always think that they are necessarily doing the best in that field. I think maybe they're the people who have sometimes paid to be involved in the awards, and sometimes you know have done certain things to be able to be in that bucket of people that get pulled out. So I. I d yeah, there's a, there's a, dishonesty is the wrong word, isn't it? No, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And, and I know what you mean on, on the paying side of things, uh, or, or, res or like winning an award, um, from, uh, and you've been awarded it by one of your, one of these sponsors. <laughs> yeah. For example. Kind of, I know what yeah. you mean. I, you'd you'd have to be pretty, you'd have to be pretty sanitized, like, and clean cut for me to not, yeah, you know, to me to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, love that. I think now you made me think about it. Yeah, maybe some due diligence. But, but then again, no, I'd probably go. Yeah, I'll have that anyway, because I just capitalise on the on the marketing aspect of it. Yeah, but that's see, so that's just it. That's 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 why I'm eventually going to fail in business because I wouldn't do that for that reason. You know, there's plenty of stuff I've been offered in like you know it'll be really good publicity or whatever, and because I don't like the the way it would show the company or the way I think people might perceive that, don't do it. I I like the fact, and we're talking about this no barrier to entry thing. Like I am pretty much a one man band with this company. I have a brother, but I'm pretty much a one man, one man band, certainly with the way it works. And I like the fact that everything that gets put out by the company comes from me. It doesn't go through a filter. So you see people going in magazines and things like that, offer that shit loads, don't like it because you're going through a filter of somebody who doesn't necessarily understand you. And that's maybe a control freak thing. I'm not. What do you mean going into magazines? So what do you mean? Let's just say you, let's say a magazine said, right, we're going to do an article and like say this has happened. We're an article on Cities Guild. And we'll, get, you know, we'll do a phone, phone interview, send us some pictures and we'll do, we'll put you in a magazine and we'll do a story. I don't like the fact that, well, one, I don't think you, it's the juice is worth the squeeze there. You know, the print media is dead. Don't like, that's pointless anyway. But I like the fact that I can talk to the people who directly, you know, I do these stupid live things on Instagram and Facebook. You know, that is me talking. It's me saying what I think. It's not going through a filter of a, a journalist who perhaps doesn't understand really, or perhaps has an agenda, or perhaps whatever. You don't, I don't think nowadays you need that. You know, there's no barrier to entry with stuff. I think you can go directly. Yes, it's slower. You know, I don't have very many followers as a company, as you would maybe think we do. But they're all genuine. You see what I mean? I, I like that direct thing. Yeah, definitely. I think, and I, I completely agree with it, actually. Um, and the, the reason I like it is because it keeps me true mm. uh and especially on the patreon support this mm -hmm. i started up i think i told you i did tell you a conversation yeah. before i started like a monthly zoom call with them every yeah month. yeah and i when i it one it 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 helps me make myself accountable mm -hmm. for things i say i'm gonna do mm -hmm. uh I, but not just that i get feedback yeah get direct feedback from people who are real like you're saying they're real people yeah like and 
and they and they're the most emotionally invested in the podcast out arguably almost all um almost all the people who listen or watch it because mm -hmm. they they subscribe they're like without having to they're subscribing mm -hmm. to the podcast yeah right um and so they're when you when i get their feedback i know it's flipping valuable i know yeah. it's genuine i know it's honest um it's really important because like you i think the, the reason this exists and it is a business yeah you know, it, it, the reason this exists was because because honest intentions started it yeah. and on it there's honest intentions behind it and, yeah. and good reason it, in just something like in one one liner to get information out that is it yeah that, i mean get information out to people who who it could help that, that is it and uh, i think if i didn't maintain that connection with people um didn't have that uh, it would be very easy to steer off course. It would be very easy, for example, for me to decide, oh, I'm only going to get people on the podcast who have, who have got, who have X amount of influence. Mm -hmm. I could do it on social media following. Yep. I could do it on, you know, anything, any, anyone who's got, uh, basically, I'm not having average, average shows on. Yeah. You know, I'm not having people without a big following. It'd be easy for me to do that. Yeah. Pretty bollocks. Because what would happen then is I'd end up speaking to people who I have got on, I've got no interest in, apart from, oh, they can help me get the podcast yep. out to more people. And then it becomes stale. It becomes mm -hmm. filtered. Yep. It becomes bullshit. There's very little substance in the conversation. Yeah. And then, and then we're on that. Then I'm a person running a podcast, which doesn't mean much to me anymore. And mm -hmm. I've, I've cheated on myself. Yeah. I've cheated on myself. And your audience know. Your audience know when you. That's why, in, uh, like Instagram influencers are pretty much that as a thing is dead, because the public have worked it out. You know, even the, the see the savvy public knew straight away and just bought into it, like yeah, whatever. But there's an element of the public who were solid and just and bought into that. You know, but, you know, we're solid people everywhere. You know, I'm public as well. You're public. We're solid. Um, but what I mean is. That as a thing is dead now because people know that so and so is being paid to do that. It's a very similar thing. You lose that integrity. You say that, but kids, mate, kids are completely absorbed. I got two daughters, and they yeah. are completely absorbed. And I try and do my best. To you're not selling to kids, though. If you know what I mean. I know. I know what you're saying. Like in that demographic, it still works. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but when your attention comes from them, when uh, it depends what it depends what you're doing and what the, yeah. what it's for, um, and they are the they are the consumers of the future, right? A 15 year old it could be in work in three years time and you're still around in three years time mm -hmm. and and you can sell to them or you can you can sell the fact that they're part of your following you've got half a million followers because mm -hmm. flipping 300,000 of them you started engaging with when they were 13 14 15 as grad you've grown and grown and grown and grown and now you've got an adult here who's got a pay packet in their pocket yeah um i worry about that the impact on kids with social media it's very difficult especially for it's very difficult if they haven't got someone who can, in their life, who can, um, uh, what's the word, who can contextualise it mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. You know, that isn't how that lady looks. Yeah. That isn't how people speak. This yeah. isn't how people interact. That is not the way you should treat people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th th you get no value from cutting about like a flipping Barbie doll, yeah, for yeah, example. Yeah. yeah. It's difficult, isn't it? Because, like, I think... You want to try and the world that they're going to grow up into is, is so different, but they're not going to know any different. It's their normality. It's n completely normal for them. Our parents would look at the world we grew up in going, how are they going to cope? I, we coped. You know what I mean? We're okay, sort of. We're all right. They'll be okay as well because everyone is in that, that pond with them. You know what I mean? They're all experiencing the same thing. And yes, there'll be casualties, just like there's casualties with everything. And yes, there'll be people who do really well out of it. It's just a different normality you can't yes you can impart your wisdom but did you listen to your parents when you were that young didn't you like you did a little bit but you also some of it you went no i, I know i know better it's just it, it just goes round and round on it it's the same yeah, thing again yeah. and again like, i spent a lot I, I have spent a lot of time worrying over the last couple of years the impact of specifically of social media mm -hmm. um smartphones yeah on smart devices, on them. I spent a lot of time worrying about mm -hmm. it. And the reason being, it's because the impact it has on me. So, yeah. you know, um, and as in the, just the habit of yeah. when you're not doing anything, the phone gets picked up. Yeah. And then I just chuck my time down the drain, going through Facebook or Instagram, and I got a grip of it now. It's just, I mean, that's just a habit. Everyone has. It's not like I'm flipping yeah, you know, yeah. addicted. Everyone does. Well, it is an addiction, but, but 
had a grip of that. I had a grip of it, but it it, it impacts me. If I if I spend too much time on my phone, my ability to focus mm -hmm. gets much more diminished. And we're just talking in a matter of hours. Mm -hmm. Much more diminished. I'm just less. Uh, I'm just less sharp, right? Um, and if I do it continually, like just day, out, you know, like I just like a day after day, get in the yeah. habit of doing bullshit. Man, I I get really unproductive. I'm just crap. I'm just crap at life. I'm yeah, crap yeah. at being a human being. You know, um, I think it's impacted, and that's why I was worrying about it. Mm. Uh, you know, getting into bed and having the phone by the bed, and then being on the phone, and then just and to, only when I'm absolutely knackered will I put it down. When I, you know, getting out of that habit. Yeah. But like you said, this is a realization only recently for me. Probably last six nine months is they are they are they, it doesn't the devices don't impact them like it impacts me because as you said they've grown up with it yeah they are I mean, yeah they, they've grown up with it and they 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 don't have that i don't think they're easily as as addicted to it as it's just like picking up a book used to be yeah i think it's just i think yeah it's um there are negative aspects to it. You can't deny that. And they are going to get some negativity. I should probably say that I haven't got kids, so I don't maybe feel things the same way you do. I haven't got this this thing that I've made, and I'm super concerned about it. I don't have – I've got nephews and shit, but um, I don't have kids, so maybe that's why I'm slightly less um, concerned about it. But – or, yeah, it's not in my life as much. But I think they are. They, they are – like you say there, they are going to grow up with it, but there are going to be ne negative aspects to it. But exactly like now – where there's a pushback against it. There are people pushing back against it. We feel that. Influencers. You feel people who are telling you you should not do this. They write books about it. They do podcasts about it. They do uh, documentaries about it. Don't do this. And you take some of it on board, and maybe you level down a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe you don't use it quite so much. They'll have exactly the same thing. You know, because at the end of the day, somebody can make money out of that, can't they? By being that person who tells you not to use your phone. I'm that person who is known for not being on social media, pushing against that sort of thing. They'll have exactly the same stuff. Who knows what's going to happen? You know, there might something might happen that means that it's not. I can't see it to be honest, but something might happen that means that it's not cool to be on social media. You know, it's not. It's not a thing. It's cool to not be on it. It's cool to be one of these. You know, you have straight edge people, don't you? Who don't drink or do drugs or any of that stuff. You have those people. Maybe you'll have people who are straight edge social media, who are off grid people. Obviously, those people exist, but maybe that'll become a subculture that will grow. Who knows? You don't. We don't know. Mm, you know. Who knows yeah. what's coming, man? You can only deal with what's in front of you. When, when I when I when I said it, I think it might be just like when you used to pick up a book. I didn't mean in terms of the quality of information. You no, no, I just, no, no. Like, no. So you do. No, I. I the, the years. I mean, here's one of my cons not one of my concerns. Here's one of the problems with social media. Look at all the money in it. Look mm. at the value of it to corporations, yep. businesses, companies, and and they get more value by attracting your attention more. Which is one of the reasons why this problem of misinformation has come about, and this problem of um, of uh, outrage media. You know, it, yep. from the you know, from the the old, the long-standing, you know, um, news outlets that you could always rely on, majority of the time, rely on to be, to have good, maybe good information, relevant information. Uh, sometimes a little bit of bias on it, a little bit of opinion on it, but you, it was it was a lot of substance to it. Mm -hmm. To now, everything is negative and really bad and really bad and it's going to be a drama for yeah. everything and that's pretty it's very very negative mm -hmm. um but it attracts attention yeah and so they'll you know they want to keep you on social media because it's, 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 it, that that's a concern of mine it, it, the picture that's being painted of the world is not accurate at all totally. i don't think uh you know the the blm thing at the moment is a prime example yeah. uh, my 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 youngest daughter i think i mentioned this before but my youngest daughter uh it was after the George Floyd mm -hmm. thing, and she's on Instagram, and she posted a story, and it was one of these videos, mate, and it had been put together, a bunch of, bunch of clips, right, mm -hmm. of different videos, yep. basically from different eras, uh, portraying an image of white people uh, being hideous to black people. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it, it was horrible. Um, but to her, white people 
if all white people yep. are hideous to black people, no. Yep. That was to her. And I'll give you an example of one of the clips. There was, a, there was a clip of, it was some sort of protest or something going on. And the clip showed a white guy screaming his head off at a black lady, mm -hmm. right? That's all he saw. Mm -hmm. He didn't see the beginning of it. Yeah, he didn't yeah. see the end of it. He didn't, yeah. There was no... Co and you could have been an arsehole and screaming at her, but the point is, you don't know. Yeah. There, was a, there was a clip of Donald Trump Right at a rally, or oh, he was he was speaking. He was in front of a thing, a big crowd there, and he was. All the clip was it may it must have been half a second, if, if that, and it was him uh, gesticulating about strangling himself, like right. like someone dying from a noose around his neck. Yeah. Like, right, something like that. It was, and uh, again, uh, wait, I don't even know if that was when he was president. Mm. It could have been, and who, who? What was he talking about? But yeah. it all been put together, betray this picture, and um. I I spoke to my mother first, like texting my mother, so we've seen what seen what she posted, and then I I was like I spoke to my daughter then about mm -hmm. it. So why did you why did you when she came around to see me next? We had a big conversation about it, and um and it was she the, the way she was thinking is that uh, all white people hate all black people. I was like yeah man, and it and we had a conversation, but it wasn't about like racial race relations. It was yeah. about you need to consider what you be what you're watching and how it's been produced and why it's been produced and who is producing it. Yeah. Okay. It, it wasn't about whether that video was accurate or not. It's like, yeah. think about things, you know, you need, you need to think past the first level of, you know, if you're thinking all oh, black people, all oh, white people, like, all oh, black people, mm -hmm. a, a police as well, like a police, yeah, police yeah, yeah. brutality thing. Yeah. She was thinking that all police um, are abusive to black people. So hang on a minute, you know, let's, let's go to the next level of thinking here mm -hmm. because you know, police officers who are, is police in the family. Yeah. I'm a white person. You're a white person. Do you hate black people? Yeah. And you can see the cogs turn in her head it, because she's gone to the next level of thought. Sorry. She's not just saying what seems to be popular and, and the, the, the message on, on social media, yeah. you know, and, and, but she's lucky because she has people in her life who can do that for her. All those kids, mate, who don't have that, mm -hmm. who don't have that sort of, um, that, 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 posi that position of not authority, of, of the, uh, someone has a normal outlook on on life, you yeah. know, to be able to give relevance to it and mm -hmm. again contextualize it, and that, and that's the, this is one of the things that makes me worry about the, the, the BLM thing in particular. Yeah, all these all these those people who don't have that kind of person in their life, or those people in their life aren't lucky enough. They're going to grow up those opinions, mate. Yeah, and it can be very difficult to change them. You know, but they experience changes, it, doesn't it? So, like, I, I agree entirely with what you're saying, but I think we all think of different things at different points in our life. You, your opinion changes as your experience changes. You know what I mean? Most of the time, it, sometimes it's someone you read about something. Sometimes you'll happen to, by chance, uh, maybe it's nowadays maybe it's a video on youtube or something that you watch and that makes that makes you think maybe you meet someone that makes you think maybe you have an experience where you know maybe you are somebody who doesn't like the police and then you have experience where the police happen to save you and maybe that makes you go well maybe they're, they're not all like this like we've all had opinions that we've changed and we never knew we were going to change them we just did because something happened you know, and if you look at it at scale, like now, obviously social media is not real life. If you look at social media, you go, everyone's fucked. But it's not real life. You know. But, but look at that. So one, one of the other things that's come about in, in a recent years, I, think, yeah. it was, I don't think it was there before, is how, how much vilification, how much uh, ridicule and abuse people come under mm -hmm. for changing their minds, guys. Yeah. And... From uh, uh, and from from MPs, yep. from the people who run run the country, yep. down to an influencer who yep. changes their mind. It, you know, and if it, yeah, yeah. an influencer who changes their mind, or it, it's it's almost it's portrayed as a bad thing, and it's the best thing. It's the worst thing. But yep. th this is one of the it's one of the things that really annoys me about politicians is that one they won't they they get asked why does this happen right they get asked a question. Mm -hmm. Why don't they answer the fucking question? 
Why didn't they answer the question? For example, do you, do you think the uh, an MP getting asked on a breakfast show? Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, a no deal Brexit is going to be uh, good or or bad for the economy? They won't answer that question, guys. Yeah. They will dance around it because because they don't want to commit to an answer. Yeah. Why not? Why not just answer? Have conviction and answer the question because they hold an opinion. They will hold an opinion on it. Yeah. Answer the question. But the only reason they don't is because in six weeks' time or six months' time or two years' time, if they're proven to be wrong. Yeah. Then they'll get pulled up and ridiculed and beasted. Hang on, you had this opinion two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were wrong. And what they don't do then is, yeah, I, I changed my mind because I was exposed to more information. Yeah. So my opinion changed. I, I changed my mind. I, that's not a wrong thing. But painting, no, no, no. painting is bad now. Totally. I understand that and I get it. But unfortunately, if politicians are a good example of what, what you're talking about, but a, a, not a good example of the people who change their minds because politics, Politics is a game of lying. And I, 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 it's not that I don't like politicians. I respect politicians. I wouldn't do that job. I think you've got to, yeah, it's a very, very difficult job. But there's, being in politics is a game. And it is about lying and stabbing and uh, trying to make the best out of lots of, lots of shit situations. And you can never be right. And it isn't just your opinion. It's the opinion of the party and the manifesto that you're pushing. Um. I think they can't give their real opinion a lot of the time. Like, giving a, a real opinion doesn't work in politics. They have to give the party line. Because, one, there might, that might be a game. That it might be a strategy to say the wrong thing there. You know what I mean? There's too, there's too many intricate weaves in the game of politics. But I let's shift from politics. I understand that completely. I just don't think it's the best example of... Because uh, we don't expect politicians to have integrity. Maybe we sh like in an old school world. Maybe you do, but we, if you're a realist, you know the politicians are in it for two reasons. They're in it because they like being a politician, and I'm not saying that they don't want to affect good change. I'm not saying that at all. That they're all dicks. I'm not saying that. But they're human beings, and they want to stay doing the job that they enjoy, and that sometimes is more important than telling the truth. Not telling the truth sometimes keeps them in a job and gets them a job that they want. You know, it's, it, it's, it, it's just, it's not the best example of what you're talking about. But like, you're absolutely right with uh, changing your mind and not being a, portrayed as being a bad thing. Like, I know, I know you're saying, but like, U-turning. Oh, U-turn. Well, yeah, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to, so we found, we did this, we found out it was a bad idea. Because something happened down the line, you know, um, situation changed, overtaken by events, and now, shit, wrong, we've done the wrong thing. Should we just drive into that brick wall, or should we turn around? You know what I mean? It's, but it's, it's a, it's a perfect storm of shit, of people who have to lie for a living, and people who are lying about those lies in order to get clicks in the, the media. So you're better off kind of just voting for who you think is going to do the best job and ignoring the media. Yeah, how do you make, how do you form an opinion? I think it's completely outdated, mate. I think right, you shouldn't, it shouldn't, we shouldn't have it. it it's not needed. Yeah. It, 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 the way government is run now is not needed. I, I firm, and this isn't, I'm just, this is just a flipping thing I'm finding out mm -hmm. now. Thought about it a lot. It's, I, I, did, I did, I think I mentioned it before, I did a podcast before I did a HR, I did like a one-off in my dad's shed, yeah. off, ran them off the, off the path. Thing and it was called. Uh, have, have you? Have I talked to you about this I don't before? Think so. I don't think so. It was called. I'm going to do it again. We're going to do it. Okay. It was called uh, colonizing Mars. Okay. Right. And the reason this this series that never was came about colonizing Mars was because the, I I I, <clears> I had. I had read somewhere something put in my mind there, like why why does government exist like it does? Uh -huh. If we could if we could if we had a clean slate, yeah, right, and we could start afresh, how would we knowing what we know now, mm -hmm. how would we structure a society? How would we govern a society? Mm -hmm. Right? And the and it, the idea was each episode would explore different questions, right? As we, as it went on. The, and each episode would take the questions of the next episodes, right? So mm -hmm. the first episode was, okay, we need a clean slate. Well, that's Mars, right? We're going to go yeah. colonize Mars. Yeah. Right. So that's where we are now. It's going to be 
50 people, yeah, because right, we just book them right there. It's going to be 50 people going to go there. They're going to have all the logistics and infrastructure that they need to survive. Yeah. Buildings, food, all that yeah. shit when they get there, right? Now, who should go? That was that was that was the first question. Who should go? And uh, yeah, who should go? And we, we just it was I did with my dad, and we ended up uh, we ended up coming on to right. Should be should it be a cross section of society, mm -hmm. for example, from tramps yeah. to the Bill Gateses, right? Mm -hmm. Or should it be ninjas, the 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 brainiest people on the planet? Yeah. Should it be fifty of those? And we decided on, I, can't, I think we decided on a cross section, I think. Anyway, what it got me thinking about all, and the reason that came about, again, is because we, we have MPs, right? We have councillors, we have representatives for each township and city and all that, right? Because back in the day, before phones, before even fucking racing pigeons, the way we would get our message as a as a town mm -hmm. to the government to go oh, this is what we want what we think in this issue that you sent by letter yeah. to the town and the lord mayor and the mayor read it out well this is what we think yeah and we'd have to have someone to go and represent the government mm -hmm. right why have we got that now we don't fucking need it mm -hmm. all it all it represents now is so is an opportunity for corruption and manipulation to like you said get whatever whatever result you want, which is best for whoever wants to be rich, whoever wants the power. So, so instead of having a, a vote on Brexit, for example, right, which is preceded by six months, 12 months of misinformation, disinformation, mm -hmm. fucking discrediting, lies, bullshit on both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. from the Brexiteers to the Remainers, right, both sides of the fence. And that happens not just in the, the, the Brexit situation, it happens in any fucking yeah. vote going on, yeah, anything like that. Why do you have that? Shouldn't have it, mate. This is how it should work, okay. right? Just on the voting situation. Mm -hmm. Fucking get rid of MPs. Not needed, okay? Right. Imagine this. Everyone's got, everyone has a phone, right? Yeah, smart device. Yeah. Or if they don't want a phone, they get, they can get a device from the government, right? And on it, on your phone is, a, is an app. It's the fucking voting app. Right, and it's done by an algorithm. Yeah, it's decided. So, let's say it's a vote on a local vote, and it's to expand the width of the dual carriageway. Okay. Yeah, and someone says, "I want to dis I want to expand the width of the dual carriageway." Anyone says it. It's a suggestion from the town of Warwick. Yeah. Yeah. It goes onto the app. Right. Everyone, the the algorithm decides. Right. Who is this relevant to? Right, because it's not just people in Warwick; it's relevant to people in Leamington Spa. Right. It's relevant to it knows the businesses that use the roads. Yeah? It, yeah, so everyone who it has an impact on, they get sent it. Their phone stops. It fucking buzzes, mate. It comes up on it. Uh, yeah, Mrs. Mary Watkins wants to expand the fucking the M the not the M forty A four whatever that motorway yeah. is out there. You got two minutes to respond. Right? You've got two minutes, which means you have got to give an a you've got to vote, you've got to give an answer, and you're only giving an answer based on what you think and what you think that impact is going to have on you directly. It's not preceded by six months of petitions and protests and bullshit and votes from anyone else's agenda. Yeah. You vote. Immediate answer. Yes or no. The road the road gets voted to fucking be expanded or not. Right? Only the relevant people have done it. No one's been influenced by external uh like by by uh by fucking marketing propaganda yeah. and all that. It's not, so you give an honest answer. The same can be done for the for elections, right? What about electing people? Imagine this. Not not your state school person who happened to be born at the right family, the right situation. How about this? Next election, it's not Boris, right? He's not one of the candidates, well he might be. But based next election, phase one is right, you nominate someone to uh, to be to be the prime minister of the UK, mm -hmm. I can nominate anyone, Gaz, on my app. I go, yeah, I want I want Gaz mm -hmm. to be the prime minister of the UK, right? Yeah. Okay. Next stage is the people with the most votes, gone to the next stage. Okay. And then as it goes, basically, as it goes on, you vote more, you vote more, you vote more, you vote more. Say it's stage three. Well, Gaz isn't the candidate anymore. It's Johnny Wilkinson, mm -hmm. fucking Johnny Wilkinson, or Mary Poppins, right? Yeah. From who I don't know, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. But as the stages go on, I get more information. Oh, Mary Poppins, uh, yeah, she was born in, 
uh, this is this is her education, for example. Yep. Here's the qualifications she got. Here's her experiences. Da, 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 da. And as it goes up, you vote, 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 vote. Yeah? You've, anyone can get in then, but you're voting on someone who is actually a fucking real person who is someone, any, everyone has the opportunity to be voted in. Yeah? You get a real normal person in government, right? Nice. Then Gaz... I'm ranting you, right? Gaz, see as Gil Gaz, right? You then find yourself Prime Minister. Oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? But you're not a Prime Minister who runs the country, because the public runs the country. All you are is a figurehead. You're a figurehead for the country. Right. Angela Merkel says, UK, we want you to um, ally with us. We're going to go and, uh, we're going to go and invade, not invade, but we're going to deploy to Ukraine to mm -hmm. support Ukraine uh, in, uh, in the fight against Russia. Yeah. And you go, Okay, uh, Mrs. Merkel, or whatever you call her, uh, Chancellor, Chancellor, isn't she? Mm. Chancellor Merkel, give me two seconds. You get your phone out, and you go uh, to the British public. Mm -hmm. Here's the vote. Should we support Germany and the UK and, and put some details in these? Be Everyone gets two fucking minutes. Mm -hmm. In two minutes, he says, sorry, Merkel. <laughs> UK says no. Most public are like, no, nah, fucking fuck you on about going to Ukraine. No manipulation, nothing, mate. It's fucking minimum impact, or minimum chance of of bullshit, disruption, uh, propaganda, people with money influencing it because they want to get rich, not because of the right decision to do. Digital democracy. Digital democracy. Okay. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's a nice idea. Um, okay, so considering that... Uh, one, firstly, I don't want to be Prime Minister, okay? So where's my human rights come in there, where I say, poke it, and we go down, 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 down to someone who does want to be Prime Minister, and you end up with someone who does want to be Prime Minister. And why do you want to be a Prime Minister? Because you want to be Prime Minister. But it, hold, but it holds a different, it hold, it's a different thing. Agreed. It's a different thing. Agreed, to yeah, now. agreed. Uh, these two-minute things I get, how many of them am I going to get a day, considering the amount of decisions that need to be made to run the country and local council and you know, all the decisions that happen in UK PLC every single day? How many of those am I going to get a day? How many, how many of those need a human to decide? So, if so, for example, if uh, if the if. I don't know, someone says we need to raise, if he's even fucking tax, uh, we should raise the tax or we should raise the tax up, whatever. Okay. Well, that should be, that should be a financial calculation and a business calculation arguably could be done in the future by software. By, is this going to be, who writes, is this going to be, but who writes the software? The computers, the machines. Joking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mate. But no, it's but true though. It's like, let's go down that road. Either it's I, IA, does it? Who writes the IA originally? You know what I mean? Like uh, IA. AI, sorry. Oh, AI. Yeah, IA. <laughs> <laughs> Check up the stoppages. Um, yeah, who, who writes that? It's either the computer, the computer writing itself, which is fucking insane, in which case we might as well just go and... It's Matrix time, isn't it? We might as well just go and get in our jaw. Um, or it's, it's people writing it, and people are fallible. You know, look at look at the uh, the algorithm that's working out COVID stuff. Just I've got abnormally high heart rate detected. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is that? I'm what like you dying. What? It's a watch. What, you, what was it? It's a Garmin Fenix Six. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a whoop. A whoop strap. Uh, doesn't doesn't go off when I'm flapping. <sighs> Challenging questions. Think isn't my heart rate's a hundred? I don't understand. Well, what about, well, what okay. about, okay, what about, okay, maybe not for everything. What about, okay. why could it not just be used for the, 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 to, to communicate the intent of districts, towns, okay. councils, intent. to the government? Okay. Why do we need MPs? I don't think we need it. That's what they were there for, to, to, to carry the message. I understand. We can fucking do it ourselves. True. But I think the problem you've got is, how hard is it to get people to actually just vote at the moment? I know they can do it. They have to go to a place and vote. But how hard is it to get people to actually make a decision about something? Yeah, but no matter, it, whether it's two minutes I'm in my working day, I'm looking going, I'm trying to watch a fucking film here, and I'm getting asked about how wide the road is. Poke it. Not interested. What happens to that person then? They go to prison? They get fined? 
what happens. Well, it's interesting. Do they should they get should you be forced to, or should they have the option to not vote? So I have the option to not. You don't have to vote. Like, but I, don't, but I mean, I mean, we are getting the weeds here about yeah. what if they get a message at work. And if they don't, I, again, no, maybe I, can, I, 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 I know, but we, you can listen. What I can arrange for is the votes. It'll get. It'll be given to you as an appropriate time. Okay. Right. I don't want it. I'm not interested. I don't, I'm not interested in that. I oh, don't vote then. Okay, so... But don't complain when you're wrong. That doesn't work. Your road gets it's, widened. The, it's the general public. That doesn't work, does it? You'll have protests because the road got widened. It happens now. How many people protested about Brexit and all that shit? I didn't even fucking vote. Yeah, but, yeah, but the thing. ammunition behind the protests, right, is because they, they're given the ammunition to go, oh, we were missold this. We, yeah. were, we, were, we were... The information was mis misrepresented and mm -hmm. this should never happened. You were lied to and you shouldn't have voted like this, right? Yeah. That, there's no room for that if there isn't the six months, 12 months of trying to persuade people to vote flipping red or vote blue or vote yes or vote no. It, it doesn't happen. So, you so there's no argument. So... So there won't be protests, because what can they protest? Humans. Why did this happen? We didn't fucking vote. Does it, yeah, but you're, you're, you're taking away human nature, is it? We're fucking idiots. You're taking away the base human nature of the fact that we're contrarians and we're, we're, we're just... The general public, some of them, fucking idiots. And they're just... Even though they have no real right as you're, in your perfect idea, that, like, you're not allowed... You've had no misinformation. It's like, well, let's just say... Okay, so they've been given no information. I'm not voting. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know anything about it. Okay, so then the people who are voting are both voting on a whim. You, you, they're either voting because it's a whim. They're going, yeah, fucking whatever. In which case, it's, it's, do you really want decisions made by completely ill-informed stuff? Or they've got their own opinion anyway, which might be completely wrong, and you, you, they're pressing the button on that. Or let's just say that that argument you're saying there about... Um, we had six months of being lied to, and that's why they're complaining because they didn't like the results. What makes you think that if all the information is absolutely genuine, they won't do exactly the same thing because they won't believe it? Yeah, no, I see your point. You know no, but yeah, I see your point. You so, end up with the same thing. Yeah. Right, I, right, so I understand. Yeah. So why bother with the six months, a year, year and a half of, of, of? dividing nations, mm -hmm. dividing families, dividing people. Yeah, yeah. Why go through all that? The, the deceit, manipulation, yeah. all, why have all that? Why Why is it a bad thing that people would vote on a whim and people and people would vote on, on, their, on their opinion based on what they think at that time, mm -hmm. not what they've been subjected to in the media? Well, that's the best option, Gaz. That's I'm, the best option. I'm not sure it is. I prefer at least some thought to have gone into whether it's lies that you have to go... Cause I, I look at the... Let's, let's take the, the idiots out of it. The idiots who aren't going to play the game anyway. Let's take them out of it. Let's take the people who actually care and are invested and will try and make a good decision. Okay? Those people... I looked at stuff coming from both sides on the Brexit thing. I voted to leave. And my missus did not. You know? That's, that, that was argument time. Um, we're very different politically. Uh, I'm sort of centre-right at the moment. But I, I've been very left, remember, I was an absolute... I said left. Well, that's it, there you go. But I was a super hippie at one point. I was like a fucking Greenpeace nutcase. So I've, I've come back to the right, slightly. Uh, but I looked at both pieces of information and went, well, I can see they're lying to me. I can see they're lying to me on both sides. I generally think, based on what I've been told, whether it's lies or not, some of it is true, some of it's lies. I made my judgments on those things, you know. I didn't just go, whatever, which is what your thing. But you have does. The, you have the benefit of having uh, having a brain that can identify when it's being bullshitted, right? And it can identify when um, it can identify when uh, certain areas of society are being, are being being played, yeah, basically with information. Yeah, yeah. you have that ability. I would argue, mate, most people don't have that. They okay. don't have that aware. They just don't have that awareness, which is exactly why. Newspapers like the Daily Fucking Mirror and the Daily oh. Sun, uh, the, the Sun, sell. Yeah. What are they full of? Bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't realise it. And this is right. And this is not me um, p uh, putting uh, 
any part of society down or any individuals down. I mean, there's entertainment factor to the mirror and the sun. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. But I'm all about people who read that and fucking absolutely consume it as if it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Right? Uh -huh. Sometimes it is. Most of the time it's fucking not. Mm -hmm. Right? Most of the time it's been information being represented in a way just to get you to buy the paper. Yeah. Because it's, oh my God. Oh my God. Look at what the Tories are doing. Oh my God. Look at what Liberty are doing. Whatever. Right? And I'm not putting those those people or parts of society down for that, right? It's it's we are very lucky in terms of that awareness, just because mm -hmm. of the fortunate circumstances in which we've grown up in, right? Uh -huh. Got to the point in our fucking adult lives now. Most people don't have that, okay? Right? So so they're gonna again they're gonna have they're going to be exposed to the, to the bullshit aspects of whatever the campaign is for whatever fucking vote or whatever issue and completely taken on board. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which, which then poisons their decision. It poisons their opinion. It takes, it makes their opinion less pure, mate, because they've been influenced by bollocks. But they don't live in a bubble. They don't, people on islands, those people talk to other human beings. So you're saying that, your opinion's invalid because you're surrounded by people, other people who have a, a set. Let's say there's a, an area of the country that is tends to be right wing. Mm. Are you saying those people don't matter as much because they've been influenced by something that's outside? If you see, see what I mean, no, it's still I, the same thing. It's like, well, we can't trust your opinion because you live in this area. Or we can't trust your opinion because you buy this. Do you see what I mean? That's not what I'm saying. Okay. No, sorry. So what I'm saying is, um, when when you when we go through a situation like Again, let's go back to Brexit, right? Okay. When you go through a situation like Brexit, um, when you're exposed to that amount of information, fuck anything, fucking, let's just say the election, I can't ask to talk about Brexit. <sighs> you, when, when you're talking about uh, an election yeah. of a local MP, okay. right, you're an MP, and you're exposed to their campaigns and all the information, you're also exposed to the campaigns of other candidates and their true stuff and bullshit stuff mm -hmm. and the the the, uh, the smearing campaigns and all of that right when you're exposed to that what it does is it it incorrectly get it yeah it gets you to form an opinion right based on things that don't impact you have no effect on you it don't mm -hmm. impact you all right so you end up making a judgment call based on things that don't impact you it has but you don't realize uh for example, no, the point I'm making is when you make a decision, I think it should be based on just the, if you're not sure, just based on what is going to impact you, going back to the Brexit thing, okay. the, a lot of people, um, there was a big thing about immigration, wasn't there? We're going to stamp out immigration, we're going to get control of immigration, we're mm -hmm. going to leave the EU, we're going to get control of immigration, da -da 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 -da. and that was, that was a massive part of the Brexit campaign, mm -hmm. right? I had a conversation with my dad who lives in Little Valley, in yeah, climate, yeah, yeah. right? How the fuck does that affect him? How does it affect him? Why is it even relevant? How, you can't possibly know, for one, how it's going to impact you. You may have some trickle-down economical impact, maybe, down in 10, 15 years' time. Okay. Apart from that, it doesn't, right? So so you make a you make your vote based on what impacts you. What impacts you? How is that vote going to impact you? Do you want to leave Brexit or not? That's it. Not... What the immigration is, it's got zero relevance. I'm just talking about that specific issue. Yeah, yeah. What these campaigns do is they fire up all these issues. They make mountains out of molehills that, for a lot of people, it doesn't impact them. Yet they're going to make a decision and make a, and put a vote in based on what the media says is important. Not fucking important. I don't know if I made a good point there. No, I, 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 I just I don't think I agree with you. Um, yeah. No, no, I, just, I, 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 I think I get where you're coming get from. Sorry, mate. Get out. Yeah, I get. I think I get where you're coming from. I just don't see. I think with the the, the personal MP thing, I, I think a lot of the stuff is about the person. I think some people vote for a person. You know, it's not necessarily because we. It's like picking the best of a bad bunch. It's like we know what the policies are of the government or the the party that, that person is a part of. We know what the policies are because that person's told us. What we care about is where can I go to that? Per if you look at our local level, is that person going to deal with my problem? Do I trust them? Is he a nasty piece of work? Because you, when you meet somebody, you go, even if they tell you everything you want to hear, you can go, you're a cunt. And it, you know, it's in the back of your mind. You go, yeah, don't trust this guy. <laughs> you know, that, that's a natural human thing. That human connection is maybe worth more than you're giving it credit for. 
You know what I mean? Because like with with slagging off MPs, like lots of them are a pain in the ass. Some of them are decent people really trying to do it. on both sides. You know, you can turn out to believe whatever shit you want. That personal level of I trust that person to at least try. I trust that that person believes what they're telling me. Like Jeremy Corbyn is a perfect example. Jeremy Corbyn believes he's a true believer of what he believes. Could, hard to get more of a true believer. And you can trust Jeremy Corbyn to go into Parliament and put his beliefs across if your beliefs are aligned with him. His, the people who voted for him in his local con uh, constituency believe in him. That's why he won. They know what he's going to deliver. Because he's, they're voting for a person there. You know what I mean? Like the, the policies that he was having to push aren't necessarily popular policies, but the people who voted for him believed in them. So that connection there is, is important. You're putting someone you genuinely believe, to, believe in into that seat. So that personal connection is more important than you're giving it credit for. I get that. I, I understand the idea of just going boop and, and voting on stuff. And it, it does seem like an extra step of potential corruption in a very corrupt thing anyway. But you are then setting things over into this digital realm, which one could be hacked. Do you know what I mean? I'll square away the security though. We'll do it. I'll, I'll sort that out. Just okay. assume that it's completely secure. All right. No dramas. Everything, everything's totally secure. <laughs> okay. What are the people who program it all? They're not secure. People aren't secure. People are people. You can be an absolute... Jeremy Corbyn, true believer. He's got a thing somewhere. There's something in his head. I know we use it as an example. It could be anybody. But he, there's something in him somewhere. There's a weakness. You know what I mean? If he was being played by an outside actor, there's something. There's people whose job it is to find out what that is. We're all susceptible to something, all of us. You know, it's there's it, there's imperfections everywhere. Like yeah, we've gone by the, the biggest rabbit hole we've ever been down. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm not saying that everything's perfect. It fucking isn't. But I th I think you take the human aspect away, and you put it down to algorithms. Which somebody once told me that algorithms are um, what. Uh, programmers and stuff say when they don't really understand what's happening. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's the algorithm. And I, you know, I, if you, what if you write the wrong algorithm? It's bollocks. You know what I mean? You put it down to AI, which is dispassionate, and algorithms. What's, why are we here then? We are just people just cracking on. We're not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think, mate, I, I, I get, I, it pisses me off. In the current situation, the, of the current way of governing, mm. you know, and I think that what it what it is, what it what it really is, is I don't like that people can lie, right, yep. or say things they absolutely do not intend to do. For example, parts of the policies and stuff, policies and stuff like that, parts yep. of policies, and you know, bring about change, and then yep. and then get into power or whatever level, and then not bring stuff about, or not even try to bring mm -hmm. stuff about. Yep. Um. And there's no there's no accountability for that. Mm -hmm. Then there should be. There sh because, again, it's the dishonesty. I hate it. You know, you vote for someone and they get into power and then what you voted for them for, they don't fucking bother doing. Well, that's the, that's where the issue is. So that's maybe where you put the constraints in. Because right? it happened loads over Brexit, didn't they? People from, um, say, you're in a Remain community. That, that pe those, the majority of those people voted Remain. But the MP is a natural leaver or believes that we should leave and then would vote against their constituency that happened constantly during the brexit thing i know we're down this fucking the worst subject right. but yeah that happened constantly there should be some sort of uh recommend system there there should be some sort of system that controls that and certainly on issues that big the mp maybe does have a way of you know, going back to the community and find out what they actually want. Maybe that we can use use your system on a smaller scale. Do you have a way of going, right, what do you actually want me to do on this? They should be a direct representative. They shouldn't be able to vote against their constituency on certainly on big issues like that. That's a big one. And you shouldn't be able to be whipped into place, you know, by their party, you know. Mm. Yeah, it should be sanctions in place for not doing shit. Because you are paying somebody. You're paying somebody to 
have the time and have the job to know about lots of stuff that affects you. That's what you're paying somebody for. That's why they get, you know, people moan about MPs pay. It's a shit fucking job. It is a shit job. And yes, they have loads of expenses. They have all this stuff. Would you do that job? No. For that money? For your expenses? That you can put anything on and whatever? You wouldn't do it because it's not, it's not your thing. They have a terrible fucking job and there's perks, but... Um, and I've lost my train of thought. No, you're right, mate. You know what I mean? You're right. It's a fucking hideous job, and and I and, and I, I I I hate to think what I'm, I would shudder to think what it must feel like for someone who because people uh, I'm not going to say most but there is because I don't know mm-hmm. but I imagine there's a significant proportion of people going into politics because they are they are motivated to do the right thing for society yep. and they think they can bring about change they think they can be popular and because of that popularity yeah, yeah, yeah. can empower them right to do to bring about good positive change mm-hmm. i shudder to think what they what it must be like for them when they realize as you said mm-hmm. it is a game of lying and it's not just a game of lying internally to you know other members of your party it's a game of lying to the public yeah it is it must be fucking horrible and and then to carry on down that path you know um and and have to act like that to to still try and bring about the change that you want to bring about. Horrendous, mate. Yeah. Horrendous. But I reckon that the vast majority of people, like of MPs, a vast majority, I'd say, they're not there for, if they, they may have joined up for, they may have like gone on that political um, career for righteous reasons, but as it goes on, I think they lose that, 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 that side. That, no, that, agreed. That and I think, I think they have to. They have to learn to play the game. I'll go, I'll go back to Corbyn again. The reason Corbyn was a complete failure is because he's not a politician. He's a campaigner. He doesn't know how to do politics. He's surrounded by people who didn't know how to do politics. But he got outmaneuvered constantly by politicians because, you know, look, let's look at the, the conservative side. Most of those people have either been uh, in politics. That they sort of People complain about that thing where it's like an upper class thing and they're brought through Eton and all that stuff. They've all been doing their campaigning and doing their debating. They've all done that all the way through. So they know how to play the game. They know how to say the right things and fucking, you know, move things in dark corners. They all know how to do that. Which is why when they were, he got outmaneuvered to Corbyn at every turn because he doesn't know how to do that because he's a true believer. He, he believes passionately in what, uh, in this campaign, not how to bring it about. He's never achieved anything. He's failed at everything he's ever tried to do because he's, you know, I'm slagging, fucking slagging the guy off here, but yeah, but um, yeah, but that's but that's my point. You, you, absolutely, but it's a it's an absolutely a game, and you get drawn into it. And if you either, if you find out the people who work in that game, so you, you get the people who are there for like two, three years, and then they're gone because they t- they're true, they believe what they're trying to do exactly. Like you say, they go in for good, and they get found out that oh, the no, not a yes man, not going to play the game when they need to. Right, and suddenly there's a scandal and they're gone. It's all a game. You get people who are playing that game there and they're the people that succeed. The people at the top, if you're in a high position in government or in any political party, uh, I'm not saying you don't believe and you don't have good intentions as well, but you're there because you are, are capable of being a nasty piece of work and know how to play the game properly. Mm. So who, is there any, any wonder that they're all a lot of broken people? Yeah, yeah the drama is that, is that they, they, again, another reason that annoys me is that these are people that, they're people that we should, asp- they're people who hold values and standards that we should aspire to have, mm-hmm. and they should demonstrate, I feel, mm-hmm. they should demonstrate that. Yep. Again, which is why the deceit breaks me, which is why they're unwillingness to change their minds breaks me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because they're an influence on they're an influence on the next generation down. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I just hate it. I hate the dishonesty of it. I hate it. I wish it didn't exist. Honestly. Yeah. Why? 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 Like we we've got a, a we've got a we've just been talking about it. We've yeah. got a we are governed by a system which is all about who lies the most convincingly. That is what it's about. One hundred percent. I am not gonna be voting for you. In the digital democracy app, by the way. Don't vote me, mate. I won't be on that system. My phone will be in the bin. Be snowboarding. I'm 
politics? What's going to happen with... Uh, do you pay attention to American politics? Oh, not really. No. Well, I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen, though. If, if Trump doesn't win, then, yeah, if he doesn't win, I personally think he will. I don't think he can be asked. Genuinely don't think he can be asked at all. I think he's like, fuck's sake, I'm going to have to do this again. I think he'd quite happily just disappear now and just go in, you know, uh, just continue just being a nutcase billionaire. Crack on. But I think he's going to win again. Um, if he doesn't win again, Biden is either withdrawn or dead after six months and uh, Harris is in as president. Mm. There you go. There's my prediction. Yeah. I think that's a plan. I think there's nothing like... As far as the Democrats are concerned, I don't think there's anything by accident about that. I think that is the game plan. How that turns out... What do you mean it's the game plan? What's the game plan? I think the game plan for the uh, Democrats in America is to get Biden in, and then I would whether withdraw him for medical t- uh, reasons, or he will actually die who's very the, early. Who's the VP? Who would be the VP? Kamala Harris. Black, female. Is she black, actually? I think but she's not black, is she? I think she's Hang like, on, isn't she? Oh. No, if we, oh if we bend out, we better get that right, though. One. I don't think she's black. Right. I think well, she's, we can speculate. Yeah, okay. I am sure. She's not Kamala white. Kamala Harris is the one that claimed to be American Indian. No, she's not. Oh, she's not? Who no, did that? That's a different one. That's, um, I couldn't tell what it is, but it's not her. It's not her. But yeah. So, well, let's not go down the ethnicity route because we'll get cancelled. <laughs> you can't get that right, no matter what you try to do. Yeah. My point is... Trump doesn't win, Democrats win. Six months to a year, you know, depends how long they take to be able to pull that off with manoeuvring and bullshit. He'll be gone. Medical terms, you know, he's got fucking dementia. He's fucked. Uh, why are they, I don't understand. Right, this a reason, guy who can yeah. barely string a fucking sentence together. Exactly what I'm talking about, because he ain't meant to be staying in as president. He's meant to scrape it because he's not Trump. And then the person that they actually want comes in as VP. Mate, they tried that with Hillary Clinton, and look what happened. Well, I'm not saying it's going to work. Mm. I'm not saying it's going to work. I'm just, well, what have they done? The Democrats, okay, we're talking about loads of shit we don't have a clue about, but let's do it. Um, <laughs> what have they done for the past four years? Nothing. They haven't thought about who they have replaced. They've just desperately tried to get Trump out. I, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not in, I couldn't give a fuck about, I'm not an anyone supporter. I couldn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Um... So don't think I'm, like, pushing Trump here, because I'm, I'm not. I don't know enough about it to have an opinion about him. I think he's funny as fuck, but, yeah. Um, they've done nothing for the past four years other than try and get him out. They haven't been thinking about who they're going to put in next. So they've come down to the end like, shit, yeah, we've got an impeach, but he's still there. All this stuff has happened. Our plan hasn't worked. Now we need to, like, play fair and try and get somebody democratic, demo, democratically voted in. We need a, a game plan. We, who have we got? Well, we've got her, but we don't think she can win against Trump. Okay, he might be able to win against Trump, maybe. doesn't really matter who he is, but he's someone they can put in and have a very good reason to then pull out and put the person that they really would like to go in. Could be complete shit. That's what I kind of feel is happening. Conspiracies. But conspiracies are real, though, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would the conspiracies are real. Yeah. Of course they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, agree, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree. Wait, 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 it's I agree. hard to see whether no, 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 I completely yeah, agree yeah. with you. And this is There's thing levels of conspiracy, but conspiracy is a real word because there are conspiracies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, conspiracies are also plans. They're plans and strategies. You know what I mean? That aren't put out there. Yeah. The word, I mean, the word does get thrown about. It's been taken. It has been taken. Been, like, you know, a, a plan that is not made public mm. or is a diversion, like the, the presidential election. I yeah. mean, you could say it's a conspiracy or you could say it's a plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's a plan, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's a good point about the word conspiracy, actually. That is a very good point. Uh, wait, did I tell you about, I did mention it to you about the conspiracy phone call I designed. Yeah, go on, let's do it. Right, so COVID, so listen to this. Uh, COVID-19 is, I'm saying, I'm repeating mm-hmm. what I was and this person's probably going to start listening to the podcast. So I'm going to say... You've got to tell me who it is afterwards. Though. I will tell you. I'll tell, so you, I know. I'll tell you who it is. I like this stuff. It, it was actually... It was it was an interesting call. Right? Okay. Um, 
so COVID-19 is a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's a conspiracy to uh, to get everyone vaccinated, mm -hmm. right? And there's the link between this and the next thing I'm going to say, okay. I'm trying to, I'm struggling to understand. Okay. It's a conspiracy to get everyone vaccinated. And when I say everyone, I mean the world. Mm -hmm. Everyone vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to achieve what the elites want, which is depopulation of the world. Yeah. Uh, because they, because they don't want, because the responsibility of maintaining so many people is too much Funny. time, effort, cost, whatever, and they don't want it. So they want to depopulate. When I say the elites, we're talking, you know, I mean, Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, they are probably from the top, and I, I think this, from the top of, of, the, of the people who really properly influence what goes on in the world, mm -hmm. they are probably second or third second down there's mm -hmm. one or two levels above them mm -hmm. that's that's my opinion okay um and they, so there they leads the one or two levels above them one depopulation but i don't understand you get from why what's the relevance of vaccinating everyone but one of the other things they said about the COVID 19 is that this is it's a, it's a way to uh there's been a, an enactment of change going on over the last five ten years not change a, a, a more of a focus on um Fear mongering and scare tactics mm -hmm. for people because it's an easier way, it's the best way to control it, it's the easiest way to control it, yeah. Uh, which is very fucking true, of course, it is very true. Two things fear and division, it's how you and if you take away any evil side of that, look at it on a practical level. If you've got a load of nutters and you've got to try and get to do something, right, as in the public, the, the public of the world, each little gang country has their own group of nutters who they would like to do something for an easy life. They think it would be better for the country, the people who are in charge of the country, will it? Okay. They think it would be better if we could just push these people in this direction. And the nutters are nutters. They've got their own lives. They're interested in things that aren't anything to do with that. The, the easiest way to try and corral those people and control them is division, the race thing, and uh, fear. You're going to get a disease by walking out the door. That's... No, you don't have to be conspiratorial about that. That's just a, a, if you were looking at it from a pure strategy, practicality side of things, I need to make these nutters do what I want them to do. That's a good way of doing it. You, know, you don't have to have some crazy thing about it. Mm. You know what I mean? If you, let's say these people exist who do run the world. Okay. Um, easier if everyone's singing off the same song sheet, isn't it? So that's globalism. Get rid of all the barriers, get rid of nationalism. Uh, we'll all just be humans on a world. And we can just start, instead of having a million different people trying to wash our own little gangs in the one direction, let's have one, one big one, and we'll just tell them all what to do. And it'll be much easier. And we'll keep them scared. We'll keep them divided in some way. Yeah, but that's... But I'm, that, not, but, I'm not saying I believe this stuff. No, I know. So it's practicality. That's that, what globalism is. Yeah, but that, but that, so that would work if, uh, if the reason that countries and states and borders and fucking taxes and yeah. all that came about was, was, was put in place because of an elitist governing, not governing, uh, an elite set of people orchestrating everything. Mm -hmm. And when I say orchestrate, and again, I, I am inclined to believe this, right? But when I say, the, I'm not saying that I think these people are all together. Going, you know, I'm just saying there's a bunch of people up there mm -hmm. who have got all of the fucking influence. Mm -hmm. They've got all of it. Some people we know, some people we don't. They've got all of it. Um, and I'm not saying... I, I, sorry. So, but they haven't always been around. I mean, the reason countries and wars and all that came around is because the way we evolved and war and fucking... And resources and mm -hmm. all that, this, that and the other. And then the ability to communicate with people who aren't directly in front of you came about mm -hmm. across... The ocean across the air, across continents, yeah. came about, and then people started talking. Um, but you know, like globalism, having that globalism, you haven't got borders, free movement, everything. You know, even where resources available everywhere. You know, it's equal resources for everyone everywhere. It's that there's then there is no control. Yeah, but would it be equal resources everywhere, or would it be resources allocated to where? They thought it was most useful for whatever goal they have in the end. Yeah, so loads of people, loads of people get to just riot and die or whatever because they, at the moment, you having food is not convenient for the big plan. So, 
you know what I mean? You, you can't come at it from like the idea that humans are good people. You come at it from the, the idea that we all want the best for everybody and we're all good, then it, you end up going down a naive route because we're not like that. We're animals. You know what I mean? We, we have needs and whatever. You know. So when you get to that scale, let's say there are this group of people, you get to that scale, the fact that a couple of hundred thousand people die somewhere, who you're never going to meet, who would solve a problem for you, and all the other people, because that's how they will always do it. Oh, the, the billions or whatever will be better off if we get rid of this couple of hundred thousand people, let them die, give them a disease, whatever, remove their resources. That works for the big game, works for the big picture, keeps everything running smoothly, and we can move in whatever direction they want. You know what I mean? It's like the idea of that globalism thing, if I, I would say in their, in their mind, would be not to make everyone happy, not to make sure everyone's got everything they need. It's just to manoeuvre their nutters on a huge scale towards where they want them to go, whatever plan they have, whether that's going to a different planet or whatever. I think that's what I think that's the idea. I think it's purely practical. And I, you can go, okay, you can say, yes, that's completely evil. If you believe in like evil being a thing and some people are evil, but, or you can look at it aside with all the problems you have in the world and go, right, we've got to take emotion completely out of this and go, how do we get these nutters to this point? You lot, you're off. You don't need you. See you later. You're gonna probably gonna die anyway. We're just not gonna try and save you. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Evil being the thing. Go on, explain that. You... Well, they say that some people believe that evil is like a thing, don't they? Like, I, I, lots of religious people do. It's like it's sort of like I don't know. There's no way of describing it very well, but it's sort of like you can catch evil. If you know what I mean, like an evil is a thing that comes into you. So it's, it's it's not a thing. People just choose to do like things. It's, like it's an emotional component that is that overrides all the others. So yeah. like, there's good in you, there's bad in you, there's, you'd like to help people. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm, I'm evil, so fuck all that. I'm yeah. fucking evil. Yeah. No, I think it's, it's, people just do evil things. People yeah, make decisions. They, they've, got a, they've, got a set of, they've got a set of factors in them, yeah. mental factors in there, emotional factors in them. That, and I mean, look, there's like, oh, fucking hell. I'm doing the uh, biologist thing again, you know, I think, or neurologist, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, a, there's a load of different components of what makes up your personality, right? Yeah. And if you get the wrong components, then you, you well, you can get components that go towards the uh, not a nice person end of the scale. If you mm -hmm. get too many of them, then you're an evil bastard. Then you go towards the other end, and you, you're a good person. Sure. And what the fuck are we talking about? We've been going for uh, hour and 50. Should we start wrapping it up? Do you want to wrap it up? No, I don't. No, we can carry on. You can carry on, mate. I don't want to wrap it up. Let's mate, carry on, then. I've got a hotel. This is fucking... Are you staying, are you staying down? <laughs> I'm not, but I could. <laughs> I could I literally, we can go for as long as you want. I'm not. Fucking but, sweet. Yeah, I, do, I don't care. I right. just keep talking. <laughs> I wish I'd eaten something today, but I might pass out at some point. Um, but yeah, let's keep going, mate. I'm fucking, I don't care. Oh my God. Right. I mean, if we stay here long enough, we nearly sorted the world out last time. If we stay here long enough, we might actually fucking, I don't know, fix the world. Uh, one second. Oh, hang on. One second. Just checking my phone. Yeah, man. Phone calls from the, uh, just, uh, sorry, people. I just, phone calls from my daughter. I'll check everything right. It's fair. Enough. Um... Yes, I think it's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've done Brexit. Say, we touched of. on BLM. Like no more than what was needed. Yeah, fucking right? hell. That's like the uh, stay away from that shit. You can't get it right. Well, yeah. I, I mean, look, that kind of that kind of situation. We're not going to deal on it. But mm -hmm. again, it's representative of people's inability to accept other people's opinions. The the I've got a friend. I still call him a friend. He hasn't spoken to me for best part of, I think it's 10, 10, 11 months. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, less than that. Nine, 10 months. Yeah. And he, he shut me off, I think, because, um, he, because I, he didn't like being engaged in discussion around a topic that he feels very strongly about. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very strongly about. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it made me think a lot about the, the, this kind of attitude with BLM, with um, 
activism in general, okay. right from fucking Greenpeace. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, not, not Greenpeace. Not. Oh, there you go. What, uh, Antifa, for example. Yeah. Or who's the environmental ones? London. No, oh, fucking um, Extinction Rebellion. Fucking stinky rebellion. Mm. Right, them. Is that these, these, these vegan activists, for example, yeah. these people, okay, they, they have a very strong belief in something. Which is brilliant, right? You, you, people need to have that. You have to believe strongly in I think at least one thing in your life, I think. It just happens, you know? Otherwise, I, I don't know what kind of fucking brain you got, but you're not living life to the full, if you know what I mean. You're not fully emotionally invested in it. But it seems to be a thing where, in order, they're trying to change the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're trying to ch- Antifa, for example, trying to change the world. And yet, the way they go about it is by refusing to engage with and also trying to stop those people engaging with anyone else, the people who don't hold the same views. Mm-hmm. It's like this, this this person who's cut me off. He he wants to change my mind. Mm-hmm. He wants to change my mind on what I think. Uh, now, the irony is I'm, I am think the same way he does. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's cut me off. Now he's got zero chance of changing my mind. Uh-huh. Not that I think any different to him. Yeah, yeah. But now he's got zero chance of changing my mind and get me to think or or be emotionally invested in what he feels as much as he is. That's yep. what it is, actually. It's not about he thinks I think differently. He thinks I don't give a fuck enough. Um, yeah. Now he's got no chance. It comes back to this this um, willingness to accept that there's stuff you don't know and you can change your mind if you want. I think a lot of the time people are afraid of they got a strong belief, and they're really afraid of learning something they don't want to learn because mm-hmm. it'll uncover a, a, a truth yep. that goes completely against what they know, and then they'll, and then they'll think they'll think, "Oh my God, I've been living a lie all this all this time. Yeah. I've been got it. I've got it wrong all this time." Yeah. You know, um, it's it's not it's not it's not good at all, and that's another thing I worry about again. Regards to my kids, is that is is that. Um, the only way it seems that people want to try and get the message across now for for for, uh, for important issues like race relations, mm-hmm. like um, sexual equality, uh, any, any of that stuff, is through is the, the first port of call is activism. Mm-hmm. That's what I think it is, and I think it's because it's so easy to get information out. On social media again, it's that default go mm-hmm. to that instead of let's try and bring about change in the right way. Present information, hold a discussion. Do I still feel the way I feel? Mm-hmm. Am I still thinking? Do I still believe in it? Okay, let's go to the next stage. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where you're going with that. Well, I think it's. I think you probably got. I mean, obviously, it's not the only problem. I think one of the problems you've got is that as we're talking about the social media thing. So as we've um, got more information about the world around us, we used to know what twenty odd people, thirty people probably really close to five, ten people you see all the time, that's your bubble. Obviously now we're exposed to the world. And I think what we realise is you ain't you ain't special. And you're just a, you're just a nothing. You know, you're just so people are very lost in that. People some people handle it fine, but some people get very lost. They feel very lonely. They feel just what's what's the point? They need to find a reason, one, to exist, which is fine. But also they the point we're becoming an activist is that you connect your beliefs so much with who you are and the, the, the persona that you take on. I am an activist for this. And whether you like it or not, there are things around that. You know, we could use the Pirates example. I could spot a Tom who's been in battalion six months by looking at him because he is saying the right thing, he's dressed the right way, he's, whether he believes it or not, he's, he's voicing the... the you know, right sort of stuff. It's exactly the same thing. You become so invested in this character that you're portraying of, perfect example, just, let's just use a vegan activist. Okay, not just a vegan who just eats what they want and cracks on. Vegan activist. Um, That's an important distinction. Yeah, it's an important it's, distinction. Absolutely. A vegan is a diet. Vegan activist is dis- different. Well, Hannah, the, fucking, the chick who does our, used to do our customer service, does, does do a customer service. Um, vegan. You know, my, my ex-missus from fucking... First of a girlfriend, you know, she's a vegan, and but she is one of those vegans. We have a little bit of banter, as friends do, for fun, because I eat a lot of meat, 
but that's it's a it's a fun bit of banter between friends. She's never tried to change my mind. You know, it's never got nasty. We're still friends. Just those guys. She doesn't. It isn't all she is. She's many other things. It's just what she eats, and that's the problem. So you you have these people who, and it's connected to why you won't change your mind, is because that's who you are. You've created this persona, this person that everybody knows you as. I am Gaz, and I believe this. He is this person. And if I get, I say something against that, I change my mind naturally. I then shit. This thing that I've built is. For, let's just say, for, sake, for example, let's say that I changed my opinion. And I decided that personal responsibility was a terrible idea, and actually, you just do what the fuck you want and just get what you need. You know, not be responsible for anything. Say I genuinely believe that. I've got to live a lie now because my company falls to pieces because it's ethos based. It all falls apart. This person, this, you know, character that I, you see, maybe it's all a lie, but this person that you see, it's, it doesn't work for me anymore. You know, it's like, that's different though. And I tell you why, it's okay. because you, the, 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 the messages that you put out yeah. and the lessons, I said lessons and I, lo I loosely said that because okay. I don't think you would like to call them lessons, but you know, right. that, in, the, that advice and guidance, yeah. you know, um, that you put out regularly, um, you, you don't, you don't claim to live that stuff religiously. For example, at the start of the podcast, mm -hmm. you're on about, you know, you, you fucking routine and, and yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're not perfect. No. You don't claim to be, which is, which, which is opposite going back to those Instagram influencers who yeah, are fucking yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. They claim to be that perfect thing. Totally. Fucking bollocks. But going back to the business thing, I think, what are you? It's just an example. I'm just yeah, trying, sorry, trying yeah, to yeah, just yeah. sort of, you know, give a, another example of it for anybody who sort of missed it. Um, yeah, it's like you've built this thing, and it's. I, don't know, I could go on a weird tangent here. We can connect this to veteran stuff if you want. Go on then. Okay. Let's go for the circle. This could get bad. Okay. Right. Go on. Okay. Just don't okay. name people. I'm not going to name people. I never do really name people. <laughs> Veterans, mental health, and personas. Okay. I think it's, you can slap me if you think this is wrong. I don't think it's sensible to connect a persona that is part of your livelihood. So something, persona, that's, persona is the wrong thing to say because it implies that people are lying and these people aren't lying. These people probably do have genuine dramas. My point is, I don't think you should connect your mental well-being with financial reward and your career. Because, and I have checked, I have like, I've got obviously mates who have dramas and I've sort of checked this with them and said, I'm just trying to make sure I'm not a dick. And they sort of, sort of get me. You, you were specifically talking about, when you were talking about well-being, you yes. mean in people with lack of, or yes. people with mental yeah, ill health okay, and, and, and exploiting that. Exploit as it's like it sounds like a negative word. I'm not meaning it in a negative mm -hmm. word, but exploiting that um, that illness or issue that they have mm -hmm. for financial gain. Yes. So, if let's just say you have PTSD and you struggle with it, you ain't fixed. You, are, you ain't close to getting fixed. So maybe you have got it and are ignoring it, or whether you've got it and you're in treatment and trying to sort it out. How I don't think it's very healthy to connect that with any source of income because if that is your source of income, is that the thing you're doing to have your a good life and have feed your family and all and whatever? It's connected to all those goals that you have. When you get well, and I'm not saying that you don't want to get well, because of course people want to get well, but what happens when you do get well eventually? You you are no longer as relevant. Do you see what I'm sort of saying? Yeah, and you said it's a barrier. You're putting a barrier in, in place for you to it's for you to um, improve yourself, get better. And again, this is for like curable stuff. You want I don't, I understand. Yeah, you're yeah, bang yeah. on. You're bang on. You 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 at risk of the the financial reward being critical to your survival, as in your financial stability, yep. your lifestyle, whatever it becomes. Yeah. You're at risk of having to heavily rely so heavily on on that that you end up in a, a perpetuation of you you can even if you get better, you can never never say you're better. Exactly. Exactly. You lose your relevance. You're basically 
trying to take your own your own financial well-being away. And that's exactly the same thing. I'm just connect that to the vegan side of it. You know, if you are, you make a career as the talking point person as being, I am an influential vegan. I am um, the perfect example. There was a guy, I can't remember his name, but Mrs. wanted to, uh, my Mrs. fancied him. He was a he was a free runner and he was a staunch fucking vegan. He was like Mr. Vegan, dead well known, Tim something. He used to drink his own piss and all sorts. He was a nutter. Yeah. He, through ill health, whatever, stopped being a vegan. <laughs> Gone. Plummeted. Yeah. But it's... Because he, he, his reality changed, his worldview changed, and he was no longer that guy. He was just another person. He took away what made him special, what made him worth listening to for some people. That influence, he destroyed his own influence by changing his mind. And that's kind of the same thing. You, If you make a, a living for yourself as somebody who talks about mental health all the time, I've, I've talk, like I write books about my being blown up and having these experiences with PTSD or whatever. You make yourself a world of that and then you get better. You're not as relevant as the person who's over here who is still suffering. Do you see what I'm saying? Or is it, there's a danger that you might be seen like that. Yeah. You're jeopardizing your financial well-being and meaning in the world that you've created from something that wasn't your fault. You just tried to do the best thing. I just don't think it's unless you've got a good news story, like you get that once. Yeah, you, I, I, yeah, but you, you, you the hero Award, award, mate. That's when that comes in. Well, that's true. But then you get that one year. That's my point, though. You, you will get. Look at that guy who was cured. One of us now, normal. Give me the next broken bloke. Yeah. It's human nature. It's just the way the the cutthroat way the world works. So you end up having to do these things that you don't really want to do. I'm not saying this this stuff is like conniving and horrible. You just put yourself in a shit situation through poor choices. And maybe you make those poor choices because your mental state ain't all there. It's not right. You're not well. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting, mate. Like, and I think. That pattern of behaviour that you're talking about, it's not just relevant to the sort of being ill side of things. Mm -hmm. It's it's about it it can Piers Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> We're fucking going all the shop here. No, no no not just Piers, but people like presenters, T V presenters, radio presenters, stuff like that, who we know them, Piers Morgan's one of them, mm -hmm. who thrive on being the the negative hammer the guest, hammer the interviewee, mm -hmm. be fucking outrageous. Um, and, and like, Piers Morgan has got to that level of what he does. He's very fucking good at it, mm -hmm. right? I don't like the guy. He's very good at what he does, though, mm -hmm. right? But he has got that level because it started somewhere. He's had to go to get, keep the attention coming yep. and to keep... Because like, people, try, people try and replicate what you're doing, the mental health site, yep. and cap books, capitalising yep. on it. Look at me. I, I can do that. I can do that yeah. better. And I, I'm not, listen, I'm not slagging off any individual. You're right, you know. Um, but you have to go to the next level to, to keep it going. And you're in a perpetual, look at Piers Morgan. He's in a perpetual state of becoming more and more and more of a band. Yep. He is, I can't stand him. It's not because I can't stand him because the views he holds. It's the way he goes about things. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has to do that. Yep. That's who he is. Imagine Piers Morgan was nice every morning on TV. It's exactly what you're talking about there. But the difference you've got there, I, I agree entirely with what you just said. But he's on a different scale, maybe, than the people that we're talking about. Mm. Piers Morgan doesn't have to worry about money. Piers Morgan has done the life that he's had. At this point of that trouble, if he went, right, I'm sick of... Maybe he's just maybe he doesn't believe what he's saying. Probably fucking doesn't. He's probably just playing that part. It's like, I'm fucking sick of this. He can go away. He has the financial well-being to disappear for five, ten years, reinvent himself... And when the next thing he can jump on come, comes around, he can jump back on it. The people who are at the sort of level that we're talking about can't do that. They haven't made that living as that person. Maybe they will, but like they haven't. So if they fuck it up for themselves now, it's job centre time. See what I mean? He has a different level of freedom because of the life that he's had and the point he is at in his life. The thing is, I think with that with that kind of person, though, I think you, I think he. I think you lose your ability. Again, I've not been there, I'm speculating. Mm. But just thinking about how quickly he responds, like let's say he, is, he doesn't believe in what he's saying, mm. okay? 
fuck me, he doesn't have to respond like he does. Quick. He's, he's all, he, he, all, he almost always goes to the, the, the opposite opinion or the outrage opinion. Fucking immediately. Yeah. And I think he has probably lost his ability to know or understand what he actually truly believes in. Because he just believes in whatever works for his for his his persona to get to give him those likes, give him those shares, give him those art, newspaper articles about him, give him the fucking YouTube videos about him because he said X, Y, or Z to whatever politician or person. Yeah. He that's his behaviour now, and he believes in whatever is going to cause the drama. He has he has probably not got the ability to make to, I to think, think about as it. an example. Somebody else maybe. But I think he is very intelligent, and he's been doing this for a long time, and he's he's a professional. I think he knows exactly what he thinks, and it's because he knows exactly what he thinks that he's able to have that freedom to to lie and be somebody else. He's playing a, a, a different persona every time. You know what I mean? If if the zeitgeist changed and he had to say different things, he would say different things because he's a. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think he believes what he says. I think he's just saying the right thing, exactly like you're saying. But I do think he has. His own belief still, but not necessarily everybody. I think it's, yeah. as an example, he. Yeah, maybe. I suppppose it depends on who's around him in his private life. Like, uh, you know, has he got if his family? Are they are they a voice of reason? You know, are they people he can engage with? Like mm-hmm. you and I talk to our families and ha- be honest and open, and mm-hmm. and they're not influenced by what he is influenced by. Mm-hmm. I suppose that's the only thing that would keep you on the straight and narrow mentally, in terms of morally and ethically properly guided mm. would be having people around you when you're not on the spotlight you're not in the camera you're not on you know on the radio mm. he's been doing it for years though, hasn't he like if you look his entire career he was a newspaper register who did some sketchy shit because it was the right thing for the story his his entire career his skill set is looking at the situation working out how to play it a, a specific way with an agenda and going in that direction that's the skill set he has he's just deploying it in a different way now and he's obviously, like I say, he can disappear. And then when he sees another opportunity come up, when he eventually gets kicked off that program, because people are lifted and their numbers go down, he'll disappear. And when he sees another opportunity, he'll come back up. Yeah. The thing is, it won't happen, mate. This is, this is, the, this is the, it won't get, he will not get, he won't get kicked off. This is the problem. If he does, he just find another platform, right? Because, and the reason being, goes back to that, what, what works, what gets people attention, mm-hmm. what, what do the media now know gets people's attention? It's outrage. Mm. It's it it's outrage. It's it's uh, being the being the the shouty person, being the person, being the accuser. Mm-hmm. It's being the accuser, not the accuser. It's being the accuser. Mm-hmm. They're the people that get the attention. That's what gets the attention. And when you're in yeah. a you're in a place like you said, mate, where where print media is fucking dying to death, um, and where newspapers, news outlets, they don't just have to compete with each other anymore, they have to compete with social media. Mm-hmm. The the BBC, the Sky, CNN, any of those, they, they've got new competition in addition to each other, mm-hmm. is just Instagram. Yeah. Instagram being Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Twitter being Twitter. Facebook being Facebook. Yeah. They are, they, those are the conduits through which people have to go to get to get to those websites, yeah. to get to those articles. Yeah, they can go there direct, but how many people don't go on to the BBC to scroll through it anymore, you know, in the morning? They go on to fucking Facebook to get the news. They go on to flipping Twitter to get the news. That's what happens. Yeah. It is absolutely what happens. Yeah, totally. I mean, I've, even, I, I've stopped myself. I stopped going to the BBC near early on in the pandemic mm-hmm. because just because it's something that's always been there. And that's the spin they put on stuff, the articles that they choose to put out. And I'm not just, I'm really highlighting the BBC just because, well, in fact, it wasn't just the BBC, it's everything. I don't, it's, I would probably go to the BBC, sometimes I go on Sky News, and the only reason I go to Sky is just out of interest to see what, how they were telling, us, how they were portraying the same story compared to the BBC. I stopped me on that because everything was about fucking, it was just outrage, it's bullshit. It's just, what, uh, and, and, and also, the quality of the articles are going down. You'd scroll down half the page and then you'd have ten, ten reasons why we like, I don't, it's the fucking BBC. Mm. I don't want ten, re- I want ten reasons why such and such is, I'll go to Facebook, thanks. F- five things you love to read this week. No, 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 I'll go to, I'll go to fucking Facebook for that. Give me the news. Yeah. BBC is a really good example, actually, because, most people would say that the BBC is skewed in one way. Let's just let's go on the BBC for a minute. They say that it is skewed, okay? 
Now, what's interesting to link it with algorithms? Me and my missus would both say that face uh, that uh, the BBC is completely skewed, right? But like you say, most people don't get it from direct. They get it through Facebook, which is run by an algorithm. You get based on all your shit, all your interests, all the things you like, the amount of time you spend looking at a picture, all those things, you know, all that shit. Based on that, it will feed you what is going to push your button. My missus would say that the BBC is massively skewed towards the right, and I would say it was massively skewed towards the left. So what's actually happening there? Left. Left? I think I think left. I think left. I think left. I think massively left. And your missus thinks right, yeah? Yeah. Even now? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck, I'm mad, isn't it? Why did you think that? Because she only sees the articles, the only stuff that comes off from the BBC, and the people share from the BBC, that goes through the Facebook algorithm, <sighs> the only stuff she sees is the stuff that fits her political leaning. Get her on the website, mate. Get a look at the bbc.co.uk. Telling you, she'll change your mind. Maybe. But then I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy for her to believe what she believes. To believe what she wants. You know, we all live in our little bubbles. You just have to be aware of the bubble you're living in. You know, you have to know the system that's working around you. Yeah. It's, it's like self-knowledge, but based on the world, on what's coming at you. So you don't just have to know you. You have to know what the world thinks about you, i.e. what you're connected to, or what your nodes of information that are coming to you. You know, I know that a lot of the stuff that comes to me is right wing. I know it is. Because there's no such thing as the centre ground anymore. You are this or you're this. It's extreme. That's the only noisy shit that happens. People with the shittiest opinions, extreme left, extreme right, are the people who make the most disturbance. Clicks, money, it's all connected. Why do you think, um, why do you think, why do you think that is the way they have, they being the royal, the royal they, hmm. why do you think that that is, that divide, that, Having two camps, or three camps, more, more mm. often not two camps, yeah. especially in the political sphere, right? Why do you think they do that? Would it not be more? Would it not be more beneficial to have a population aligned with each other and completely behind the intent of the governing the government? Yeah, but people don't do that, do they? I mean, it's not a natural thing. People, we don't all think the same, even if we're told the same. But why drive it so hard to, to the extremes, to the left and right? Like I said before, division. Easy to control. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's not, you can go, division, they're dividing us, uh, evil fucking conspiracy. It's not. Whether you like it, maybe it is. But it's, it's practicality. You can shift the nutters in one way or the other. They're easy to control. Divided basics isn't it you know disinformation and you know, what what do we do when we go to war it's disinformation you know you find the gang that you're going to stick with for the moment and you work against the other gang it's it's all nothing none of this is new i've been for thousands of years hasn't it no i think the problem is it's just it more they 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 They've got more tools at disposal to totally. do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. massively effective now. We're at the point, as with all things, as they go forward to the future, we're at the pointy end. Things just get refined and refined and refined. Where do you see it going? For fuck's sake, Jesus. Well, I'll be dead. I don't care. But I think it's it may potentially get real bad. I think you can have a situation where um, we connect financial well-being to your opinion. I think you're going to get to a point where you have... Because Universal Basic Skin Cook is going to come in, in, in isn't it? It's going no, to I don't think so. Okay. Do you think? Yes. I know it's going to come in as that, but I think very, 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 very slowly, some sort of universal... I don't think it's going to be called that, but I think there will be a situation where you will get at least some money, everybody, from the government or whoever's in charge, and it will be digital. It will all be connected. And you'll be able to be fined by your actions. So if you, at the moment where you have, you might make a post that's deemed to be shitty on social media, that's against the party line, or the, you know, whatever social zeitgeist is happening at the moment. I think instead of you 
getting a phone call from the police and say we you need to take that down or we've been blocked as ha- has happened every now and then uh, or you get a, a letter or whatever or an email giving you a slap i think it will be taken directly from your digital fucking bank account but that would for that to happen that would mean that the platform which you do it is not a privately owned corporation like facebook or instagram or twitter yep. or fucking wherever off or uh, um LinkedIn or whatever, mm-hmm. you'd have to be government-owned or controlled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be like benefits. You'd, be, you'd, you'd, you'd get your private income, maybe, if you work for somebody. But I'm, I'm sure they find a way to rope in your employer. But, like, self-employed might get away with it. But let's just say you're somebody who works for just a, a business. So you don't, you're not self-employed, you work for a business. And, yeah, you get, you get your pay into there. But you also get... And the idea would be to make you more reliant on it by giving you more money. Because if, if it's digital money, you can just, if you're controlling the economics of it, you can basically just print digital money. Because it's not really real. It's not backed by anything. It's not gold backed. It's not backed by anything like that. So you can, on a big scale, you can play the global economy digitally so it all works out. Okay. On a lower level, you're getting your amount of money every month into your bank account that you come to rely on. Yeah, and they make loans really easy to get. That's all connected. Buy a house, yeah, no dramas. Everyone can have a mortgage and buy a house, but it's all connected to this. And then you fuck up in some way. They hit you where it hurts. They hit you with your money. Yeah, 500 pounds, not having that this month because you did this, you did X, you didn't turn the party line in some way. And I'm not talking, this is not next week. You asked me where I thought it goes. And we're talking about the idea being that, uh, we try, it, there's, we're trying to make people do what we want as easily and as practically and as possible. I think that is a logical way that it would go. That's, inter- that's interesting because I've it's always looked at it, 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 yeah, it, it's, I've always looked at the universal big, basic in, income thing. Over the last few years, I've been aware of it as um, what would uh, what would be brought in as a wholly positive piece of change for positive reasons, mm-hmm. and they, you know, it's been you know they've said that. Um, uh, especially when you're talking about the the um, in, the, the advancing ability of machines to do our jobs, so there's mm-hmm. going to be less jobs in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People need money, totally. but also people going to be be able to be more creative. And yeah. um, and on the EBI side, yeah, that's interesting because looking at it from the way you just said it, it would be the most effective control me- mechanism that there could be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you've got money that you're relying on. And if you step out of line, and it's much easier for them to monitor us now, mm-hmm. let alone in the future, you step out of line, you lose your fucking money. So you just do what they say. Oh, mate, we need a civil war before that. We well, you know, who, knows, that who knows what will happen? But it's, it's it. It's like you have exactly the same situation you have now where people who have their own money, who maybe are uh, wealthy already, the money that they have through whatever they do, whether they run their own business or the people who are higher up on the scale, who are... Um, don't need to be controlled quite so much, maybe, because they're focused on what they're doing, if you see what I mean. They'd be fine. Yes, they get their income, but if you take 500 quid off Bill Gates, he's he's an extreme example. Let's just say somebody else. Let's say somebody who's who's earning 200 grand a year. If I do a post on Facebook, we're using that as an example, but if I do something that doesn't tell the party line, you take a grand off me. Same with with footballers. Yeah, whatever, mate. No drama. It's percentage-based, though. Well, maybe it will be. You, you bring this forward. I, <laughs> we know how much you like algorithms and digital stuff. You know, imagine that connected to what you were talking about with voting. Mm. Connect those two systems. It's all the same sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the, it would be exactly the same system system with inequality now. So the people who have more would have more freedom because the fact that they're being fine for doing what they wanted and thinking what they wanted wouldn't affect them as much if it wasn't percentage based whereas the people who were desperately reliant on a job somewhere an employer because obviously pressure would be put on employers to join this system and whatever so you get the control there it'd be exactly the same so the people who are on benefits now or people who are on low incomes or people who are connected to their employer who really need this digital thing that comes into the bank every month they're the people most likely to be rogue, and they're the people who will have the most control over them. So inequality doesn't change. 
That's frightening. It's horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. Yeah, and if, if you want to go down the conspiracy route, don't believe this. But if you want to talk conspiracies, let's look at COVID now. What are they trying to stop you using? Um, uh, what do you mean? Cash. They're trying to go to swipe everywhere. Don't need money, it's dirty. Swipe everywhere. Maybe that's stage one. Of, of stage 100. The COVID conversation I had this morning mentioned that. Yeah, with, like, but that's said, a, it's a common thing. Why are they trying to get away from cash, make it all digital? Yeah, because mm. you can manipulate it. You can just go, and what, you could just go off to somebody's bank account, couldn't you? It's not just that, it's all, you can track everything then. Of course you can. You can track everything, all transactions, where they go, yeah. hypothetically speaking. Yeah, yeah. There's no dodgy dealings. Yeah, I mean, we saw that kind of, yeah, dodgy dealings, but the people who are doing the dodgy dealings, are going, to, are going to be higher up in the system, so it won't matter anyway. I didn't. Yeah, I'd sorry. I didn't mean dodge. I didn't, there's, there's, there's fraud. Going to, there's going to be less. There's going to be less un, untrackable uh, uh, communication of money. Yeah, well, it's all tracked now, though, isn't it? Apart from the cash, everything's tracked now anyway. There's people who talk about having chips put in by fucking vaccines. You've got a phone. You are trackable. You know, if you, people want to read your shit, they'll read it. If people want to track you, they'll they'll track you. You know, that's. That's just normal now, you kind of have to accept that. Mm. I don't like it, but that's the world we live in. Um, yeah. Man, I need a toilet. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Um, oh, unless there's anything else. Talk about whatever you want. Well, you, you, you burst my bubble. Are you bored? You burst, no, I do need a toilet. You burst my bubble on, uh, on, on just digital democracy. Joe Rogan just goes to the toilet and comes back. I can make it set. Well, there isn't one. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm not Joe Rogan, mate. You got a hundred million dollar Spotify deal. I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> uh, no, mate. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Um, been a pleasure. Mm. Seniorsguild.co.uk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. That's it, man. Nice chat. Next time. Whatever you want. Done. Next time, Bushy.